Hello, welcome back everyone to the Lichas broadcast commentary of round seven of the candidates open and women's section 2024 from Toronto, Canada. And I'm your host, International Master Irene Sukandar, and I'm calling all the actions alongside International Master Eric Rosen and International, International Master <laughs> Laura Unuk. Hello, Eric and Laura. How are you today? I'm Hi. good. It's great to oh, be yeah. here. <laughs> now we're going to have some problems. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it again. How are you, Laura? It's ladies first. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, I'm doing well. I took a nap before having stream the stream, so I hope uh, I'm gonna have uh, more sharp lines today uh, and less blunders. And <laughs> we're gonna see what's gonna happen. Yeah, blunders are fun, so don't hold back. <laughs> you know, you can keep showing all your moves. Um, it's it's never good or bad moves. We hear. Yeah, we all here just for the fun. And Eric, we've missed you since the last stream. So how are you doing and what have you been up to? I've been doing well. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird because yesterday or last few days, I've just been watching the chess, uh, watching a lot of your guys' commentary along with other channels and following the games closely on the chess. But now today, it's uh, it's nice to be back in the, the commentator's spot and... Uh, yeah, look, looking forward to uh, to watching and commentating the games today. Yes, you are very much missed by the chat as well, both on YouTube and Twitch. And yeah, we are happy to have you today with us. Um, and uh, you've been also watching the past few games of the candidates. What have been your imp impressions so far? It's just been super exciting. I mean, the last few rounds with, uh, I mean, the game's going... I think a bit longer compared to the beginning of the the tournament. Uh, players really fighting until the very very end, and we're seeing players crack to the pressure. I mean, not to, not to point them out uh, immediately, but um, Faruja and Abbasov really struggling, having a hard time uh, maybe dealing with some tilt early on. And I saw something very interesting um, just a few minutes ago on Twitter that Faruja actually was playing Blitz last night on chess.com, maybe trying to blow off some steam from his tough results. But he had a small Blitz match against a FIDE master. Looks like he played close to a dozen games and didn't have the best result. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see if he can uh, maybe regroup himself for today. Yeah, we will see. And he has to bounce back uh, from, I would say he's on the second lower half of the field right now. But anyway, we'll see the standing very soon. Laura, will we, will we see your cats <laughs> today? I was about to ask that. <laughs> Well, I am not sure. I hope they're going to show up, but uh, one of them just pooped in the bathroom, but literally on the floor of the bathroom, so not in their toilet. Uh, so some of them are having good time without me. And will they be coming uh, here? Mm, if if chat wants to, if if you guys want to, you know, <laughs> I can I can make things happen. Sure, the more the merrier. Anyway, let's uh, let's see what's on the menu today. And yesterday it was another exciting day at the office. And let's see the standings after round six. And Ian Napomniachi sharing the first place with Gukesh with four out of six. Fabio Nakarana sharing the third place with Prognananda with two and a half out of six. And Hikaru um, is sharing the fourth place with Pidit Gujarati. Sorry, the fifth place with Vidit Gujarati with three out of six. And the lower two are Abbasov versus Firuja with one and a half out of six without scoring any victories yet. So we have two players in this field that hasn't scored any victory yet. And today might be the day. And in the open section, what we have on today's pairing? Ooh, Laura, Eric, look at this. <laughs> Hikaru will be, will be playing with white pieces against Ian Nepomnechi. And we have another clash of generation between Fabiano Caruana versus Prakananda. And we have Nijat Abbaso versus the super solid Fidit Gujarati, who just defeated Ali Reza yesterday. And we have also Ali Reza himself versus Gukash. What are your thoughts? 
Laura. <laughs> yeah, you will have to spe spe specify now. Yes. So we're gonna talk <laughs> first. It's gonna be. Um, no, I mean, we already talked about it yesterday. It's going to be so, so tough, especially I'm so excited about uh, Nepo versus uh, Naka. Well, mm -hmm. actually, it's the other way around by colors. Um, the match might be wild and I love wild matches, but I'm also very excited about Prague's game against Caruana with black pieces mm -hmm. as we, he was showing such great openings. So uh, every game is going to be so exciting again. And I don't know how we will decide which one to cover. And what about you, Eric? What do you think of today's matchups? Yeah, I think the matchup between Hikaru and Nepo are probably going to be the most uh, most interesting because if Hikaru can win, especially with the white pieces, then he could be tied for first after this round. And I mean, so far this tournament seems like he's been playing very solid chess, uh, at least trying to uh, not not lose his games and. Mm -hmm. If he, I mean, if he pushes for something more today, then it could really just blow up in the standings and, and um, make the rest of the tournament very unpredictable. Right. Well, today I have some suspicions that, um, unfortunately, my suspicion is a draw, a very, very mm -hmm. solid draw um, between Hikaru versus Ian, because with Black Pieces, um, I don't think Ian will try to mud the water and then will just try to not defend, but play solid chess and then make an, a relatively easy, easier draw. Uh, it's going to be also interesting between Fabi versus Prague. I think, um, yeah, I don't know what sort of opening they will come up with. But yeah, we'll also keep an eye of the other games too. And let's take a look what we have in the women's. So from yesterday's result, we can tell there are four decisive games happening so all the games in the women's section they were all decisive and Tan Zongyi is still leading clear first by four and a half out of six and Gorchikina still on the clear second with four Faisali is in the clear third with three and a half Li Tingjie is now she started up uh, to be on the first uh, half of the field because she was on the bottom field before and now thanks to yesterday's victory she is now in the clear fourth with three out of six followed by Katrina Lahno and Salimova with two on two and a half and Konor Hampi and Muzichuk they are on two out of six so wow this is this is quite a turn of events because yesterday um yeah the standings were very very much different but thanks to the four wins yesterday yeah it's it's it looks a little bit different in the midfield to the bottom field but we still have the two leaders uh we still have the same two leaders Tanzongi and Gorchikina and about two days sparings in the women wow Eric Katrina Lahno versus Salimova I forgot who did you root for in the women's section actually you mentioned it before. So I, I didn't really pick a clear favorite, but I, I did mention that it would be really cool to see Vaishali and Prague win their mm. respective tournaments and then maybe go on <laughs> to be brother-sister world champion. Of course, we're, we're still very far away from that. But uh, yeah, if I had to root for anyone, it would be Vaishali. Uh, she's the only player I've played among these eight players in, uh, in a classical game played her a few years ago in Australia and I mean she's just such a strong player recently got her grandmaster title so be be cool to see her go uh, a long way yeah 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 well it's still a long way to go for anyone to be the world champion too because whoever wins the candidates they have to face Ting Liren and Juwen Jun to win the title so let me continue with Alexander Gorchikina versus Tan Zongyi. And I think this is also one of the most anticipated matchups of today's rounds because both leaders are paired against each other on round seven. And we also have Anna Vuzicuk versus Konor Hampi. And as we see from the standings, uh, they are currently in the bottom field. So it is going to be quite interesting uh, who is going to um, kind of like offer push one another because they've been having not really a great tournament so far and especially Anna Muzichuk, uh, she had a few winning games, a few winning positions where she failed to win the games. And we also have Li Tingjie versus Faishali. This one is very interesting because Faishali um, always 
come up with something new. I think it is also because of the help of her second, but also because, well, Pragnananda is her brother and then they always try to prepare together if possible, but I don't know if in, in the candidates they work together because it will be a very busy event for both of them. So what are your takes, Laura? Yeah, no, it's going to be very exciting. All matches are going to be very exciting, of course. And I, I was a bit distracted right now because I have I both of my cats arrived in the room. Oh. <laughs> so I am so sorry um, about my <laughs> distractions. So there, there was go. black cat on me just now and she was angry that this one came. So she left and now we have smock smock. So I'm so sorry <laughs> about being distracted. Um, and I think, yeah, I think just what they just want attention. They miss me, you know, they like to, they, they usually sleep uh, on the bed with me. And now that I'm streaming during the night, they're just very mad at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. They, they, they must miss you too, because you were away for the Minorca Open yeah. and then you were not home for days. Yeah. Well, today it's uh, the last game before another free day, because tomorrow, uh, we are yeah after today's games we are officially entering um we're going to enter the second half of the tournament there will be 14 rounds to play and then today's round seven so we're halfway there yeah uh still long way to go for all the participants to finish but i'm expecting like usually toward the second half of the event and toward the end of the event there will be blunders coming up on the board especially mm -hmm. when they are approaching time trouble and also sometimes uh, the players, there are two types of players when they are getting some fat thinking <laughs> chess that they would just play, play, play like very fast without thinking or another one would be just thinking so much over the board until they get into time trouble and it kind of like a bit messy in the end. So Laura, you are still a very professional chess player. How are you with time yeah. troubles? Oh, time troubles are like my hobby, you know. <laughs> I have to <laughs> I have to get them every game, otherwise it's not a real chess game for me. <laughs> I am terrible. I love to think. You know, you said when you when you lose that confidence, when you start losing some games, mm -hmm. uh, for me it is that way that I will spend all my time triple or or even five times check over all my lines if I'm calculating correctly. So um so for me that is what's going to happen so like i like i said yesterday i would hate to play man uh time control because i would probably use both two hours in like 20 minutes and then not, not survive till the end so yeah that's that's what would happen oh yeah what about you eric how are you with the with your time management and how are you doing with time travel too yeah, honestly, I haven't played a classical event since uh, the Qatar Masters, and in that tournament, I think I've like I did better compared to earlier events with managing my time. Um, but yeah, I have I have similar issues where when I start with let's say ninety minutes or two hours on the clock, I can get very complacent, and the time time just goes so much faster mm -hmm. when you're playing a game of chess and you're immersing yourself in the position and you're, you're getting lost in, in calculation and uh, just trying to anticipate what your opponent's going to do. So it's such an important factor really at any level is to not move too slowly, but also not move too quickly. And I think we see with some of these players, they're very good at managing their time. They stay out of time pressure. But then other players... Uh, I mean, the game a few days ago between Hikaru and Fruja, Fruja got severely low on time and ultimately blundered in time pressure, which led to him losing the game. So yeah. I think for some of these players, it's so important to stay out of time trouble, trouble uh, as much as they can. I agree with you. And speaking of moves, we have some moves already on the board. I'd like to go to the game between Ali Reza versus Gukash. <laughs> Because I'm so will, happy right now. It will it's finally happen. a lot. Let yes. me pull up the analysis. I'm so slide. happy. There you go. The London opening. <laughs> oh, I have the chess mug with me today. Oh it's my gosh, this London, is the curse. London Ooh. system. This is the London Let's system go. curse of today. <laughs> because you drink that. that. <laughs> you drink to that, Laura. And then this happens. <laughs> oh yeah, cheers. Cheers to that, you know. 
Yeah, so d4 and f6, bishop f4, and Gukash is currently thinking what to do on the <laughs> second move, which is, I think, quite um, logical because, yeah, usually you want to start with knight f6 because, well, we never know what Ali Reza would come up with, right? After d4, <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe he's preparing for Tarsh again or King Senior or anything, but then after bishop f4, I think it's quite a it's quite a surprise to have a London system um, in the candidates. I mean, we see mm -hmm. a job of a London in the women's candidate before, between Tan Zongi versus Faishali, but a London itself in the candidates, you know, uh, I would never expect it. Eric, yeah. you are kind of like one of the London experts. What what do you think about this? Oh, it's one of my favorite openings to play from the white side, and like even. Even at a high level, like it's seen on occasion. Obviously, it's not as popular as a Queen's Gambit or more of these like theoretical E4 lines, but it does have some surprise value and it's also a flexible opening. Like it's not just about playing the London setup, it's about kind of how you react to what Black is going to do. And um, it's an opening that I think has been underestimated by a lot of strong players over the years. So I'm super curious to see what Gukesh will choose. Um, of course, it's it's an opening that all these players have to be prepared for because um, it does come up from time to time. And uh, I mean, in the current position, I think the main the main move by far is pawn c5. Uh, mm -hmm. But already here, there's a few options for black. There's pawn e6, there's pawn two, um, pawn c6 as well, or bishop f5. It you looks like he did play pawn c5. Oh, wow. Yeah. You called it C5 is on the board. So, Laura, we know that London opening um, is uh, one of the <laughs> most popular yeah. openings in the internet out there. So, how often? No, do you do you play London yourself? Because you play D4. Well, yeah, I'm not such expert as Eric is, obviously, but I do enjoy playing London from time to time, mm -hmm. just because. Sometimes your opponents are very well prepared in these Queen's Gambit declined or Catalans. So London for me is just, you know, a chill option. Even though these C5 lines can get pretty messy, um, especially this Queen B6, 96 Queen B6 ideas, right? Um, with this B2 pawn sacrifice. I played this once with White and I had to know like 25 move theory. And even after it was not clear. So, yeah. Yeah, this one. Maybe just to show that on the board, because this is one of the most critical mm -hmm. lines after um well it happened in the game after knight of three. Yeah. Uh DC five is usually played after I mean it's a move in this position, but mm -hmm. he didn't play that, did he? No, he didn't. And knight f3 no, was he played knight of three. Knight three yeah. yeah, so the main line is knight c six, knight bd two, and then queen b six. Mm-hmm. It's one of the critical lines. And this is where white can take on c5. And yeah. I think, Laura, this is what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So get super, super sharp. Yes. Yeah, I hope we see that. We hope we see this, yeah? No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. But it's interesting because um, I think there was a game between alpha zero and Lila or something that after mm -hmm. queen b6 and then d takes c5, queen b2, mm -hmm. rook b1, and queen c3. And it was... It yeah. was um, I could I could just show the the next yes, few moves uh, after Queen C three Bishop B five, uh, yeah. Bishop B five yes, Pawn E six, Castle, and then Bishop E seven. So Alpha Zero is playing White. Stockfish was Black. Oh, Stockfish. This yeah. is part of their famous match from a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And in this position, Alpha Zero came up with a, a really cool move, which may have been a novelty at the time. Is Pawn E four. Um, mm -hmm. very crazy pawn sacrifice and this this did sort of revolutionize the theory of this opening and for the last few years theory has kind of developed here mm -hmm. and it's it's a very difficult line for black to play if you're not su super well prepared with uh, engine lines um, maybe just to show one trap if d takes e4 white is already winning after knight c4 and rook b3 is coming mm -hmm. and the queen is going to be trapped on c3 Fun stuff, yeah. And after this? Uh, free queen. Free the knight's queen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, it's a very it's a very fun stuff, but we unfortunately wouldn't see this on the board because um, Gukash 
played e6, not, not knight c6, and Alariza played knight bd2 right away. Mm. Eric, what? And this is, I mean, this is kind of still unfolding in terms of uh, the the line that they'll reach. But I mean, the, the old main line would usually go knight c6, pawn c3, and bishop d6. But um, I think there there are maybe a few nuances with the move order here. Like bishop d6 immediately can also be played as a way to um, to challenge the bishop on f4 and after bishop right b5? away. And bishop b5 is actually my my prep. Yeah. So we're um, not going to reveal usually that. Usually knight c6. <laughs> I, I'm happy to reveal it after knight c6. <laughs> I never got to play this in a tournament game. I played this position a bunch of times online, and as far as I know, there's a, a novelty here for white because uh, uh, the main moves are usually either bishop g3 or knight e5, mm -hmm. uh, but castling is a move that it's one of the top engine choices, but I don't think it's been played before in over-the-board play, and it just leaves all the tension in the position, keeps some flexibility. Yeah. Well, this is interesting. I might actually take note of this variation and then um, analyze it for myself because I, I play London from time to time as well as white. And mm -hmm. yeah, this is an, a very interesting approach. But what we see on the board right now... Oh, so there is queen b6 somehow. <laughs> queen b6, but with the inclusion of e6, I think yeah. it's a bit different. I think I played this variation yeah. as black too. Um, mm -hmm. This offers a very um, flexible line for black. Uh, not the usual queen b6, knight c6, but here rook b1. Because there are also some lines that you can just uh, give this b2 pawn for free. Uh, the usual poison pawn thematic <laughs> principle, uh, which will turn the game into a more dangerous line. But here, Ali Reza just play rook b1 and safely uh, protect the b2 pawn. Uh, Eric, have you encountered this in any of your London games? Yeah, I'll admit that this is not a line I've put so much emphasis on studying because not too many players will play this, at least around my level. But um, I am aware that this line has been played before at like the kind of higher grandmaster level and looks like they're still very much within known territory. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have the Lee Chess Masters database open and there's been... <laughs> uh, about a dozen games, looks like actually nine games after bishop to d7. Um, but I mean, it seems like white is getting kind of the setup that he wants with the eventual um, like pawn c3 and bishop d3. I can say though that the it looks like the point of bishop d7 is to trade off this bad bishop for white's good bishop. Uh, it looks like bishop b5 is coming for black next move. Mm. It's not the easiest move to stop. Right. Mm. Laura, this looks like a little like French position as black, <laughs> right? Uh, except yeah, that you already yeah. exchange your pawn on c5 to d4. Usually you still have it on the board, like on c5. What do you think? Will you be comfortable in playing this position as black? Well, I like this bishop d7 idea. I mean, it's a really good question for white. Like, am I just exchanging this white colored bishop? And because if we do that, aren't we just absolutely comfortable with, with playing this. Uh, I don't know, I, I like it. I mean, Gukers seems to be prepared for London here, so that's that's great. But also, you know, I, I like playing London with White, so mm -hmm. I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine. I just don't know how do we approach this Bishop D7 idea. What, what's the... Do we stop Bishop B5 somehow, or we just develop? And what do you think? Yeah, good question. Uh, I wouldn't... Yeah, bishop d7 is very interesting because I would have thought that after this position, knight c6 would be my automatic move. Mm -hmm. But yeah, bishop d7 offers a completely different idea. You want to play knight c6 or knight bd7 later, but bishop b5 is uh, just pretty much an effort to equalize um, the position. Uh, yeah... Do I play queen e2? But it doesn't look like it's a good move because <laughs> even if you stop it, like queen e2, there's always a6 coming mm -hmm. on the board. But maybe with some concrete play, you can have c4 or something. I honestly haven't analyzed this position deeper. So in this case, maybe I would just play a normal approach. I would play 
uh, like knight e5 maybe, forcing this to happen. Mm. And then, and maybe, maybe actually in this position I play c4. Oh, with, yeah, playing no, no. with isolated pawn though. This I is mean, a bit too yeah, much. Some, this is a bit too some much. Pawns because are hanging. The pawn on d4 is hanging. Yeah, this is a bit too much. It's uh... that, That's why I think c3 was played. I'm also looking at the Lich's database because, you know, flex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and c3 has been played uh, most, most commonly. And after bishop b5, I guess, then white even can play h4 as an idea. Oh, h4. Forget about castling because you can just put your king. And and C three is on the board. Virgil listens oh. to you, Laura. Oh, that's uh, that sounds great. <laughs> you drink from a cup that has a London position on it. You call for C three, and then it indeed happened. And then are we going to see H four on the board? Because this is going to be a quite interesting turn of the opening. Oh, I would love to see H four on the board, wouldn't you? I would, and Eric. <laughs> So, so how do we explain H four to like the casual viewer <laughs> who is taught to like castle early, control the center, develop your pieces? Like, what what is the point of H four here? There's no rule in London. We can say that. <laughs> that's well, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, H four idea is such an alpha zero move, and we've seen Magnus play these kind of moves in all types of the positions. Mm -hmm. But it just makes so no. much sense to put this pawn to h5 and then suddenly you have this positional advantage or you can even go g4 g5 i love playing this kind of structure just because you're scaring the opponent like engine always says black maybe is even slightly better but your opponent is kind of scared you know uh, because the attack is going to happen one way or another. Yeah, and H4 is already on the board, Laura, as we speak. <gasps> really? Wow. Yes. Yes. I'm, wow, wow. Me and Firuja on the same vibe <laughs> today. Label. I don't know if that's good for him. Probably not. But I feel good. I feel good. I guess yesterday's loss against Fidit, it's like, you know, the moment when you said you walk up the lion, yeah? And maybe now it's, it's the time for Firuja to really show his thief. He doesn't want to be in the battlefield anymore. He had he has to score at least one victory before the rest day. So H4, we are going to see this game, uh, I think, quite regularly because this is going to be another interesting match that um, Firuja is doing. Eric, what's your take? Yeah, I, I imagine that he's still prepared. Um, H4, as Laura mentioned, it's like it's one of these computer type moves that is becoming more common in like high level grandmaster play. And yeah, I, I sometimes play this in other types of lines where the idea is just to get the pawn on H5 and then have this clamp on the king side, like even sometimes H5, H6, induce some weaknesses in Black's king side mm -hmm. structure. And I really like that he's leaving the tension between the light squared bishops because if black ever takes on f1, I assume the idea is to recapture with the knight. Uh, oh, or with maybe the, with the king, yeah. I think both is a good idea. Both are yeah, good. Yeah, both are good. I was thinking just reposition the knight to mm -hmm. e3 or g3, maybe even later play g4, g5. Ooh. Looks like Faruja is going to maybe try and play a lot more aggressively today. Let's hope so too. Mm -hmm. What we are going to see next is indeed the most aggressive position uh, so far, I would say, and the showcase in the in the Petrov opening. Let's take a look at the preparation between Hikaru versus Ian. Just take a look on the current position before we go, um, before we go uh, seeing it from the first move. <laughs> it looks like quite a mess there, but let's take a look. Well if Wait, is that all theory? I think so, because they've been playing very fast. They don't really take much time. <laughs> knight after knight f6 and take on e5. This is still the the theory. And then castle, castle c4. c6, rook e1. And bishop f5. Yeah, this, this position has been played uh, widely by many good players. So, okay, bishop c7, just a quick note there. You cannot take on this one yet because of the discovery. And then the the queen hangs so after bishop c7 in order to take on b7 you play g3 first but then a5 ian was not scared if you want to take my pawn go take it um but he can't play knight bd2 first followed by bishop e6 and now he took it so they start with two hours on the clock yeah and then they only spend like 
10 to 4 minutes actually. So after this, yeah, after queen takes b7, we see a sacrifice on f2. Uh, I think I'd like to analyze what happens if we just... Oh no, you cannot take on f2 for the same reason, yeah? Because after this, you can just simply mm. take on g3 and another... Um, and showing in the queen hangs again. So after knight takes f2, bishop take h7. What are they doing, Laura? What sacrifice <laughs> after another? And then king takes... Queen takes a8 and check, king g2, and now um, Ian is still thinking. I'm so confused here. Can somebody explain how and what's going on? And is this theory, is this, I mean, is this going to be a forced draw? There's so many sacrifices. It looks like, it, it looks very exciting, but at the same time, what? I think this should be. I'm kind of in the same boat as Laura there. <laughs> Just what, what? What is happening? I think this should be one of those lines in the force draw file, like mm. what, what we mentioned yesterday, Laura, because um, mm -hmm. I don't believe if they found this over the board with such a short time. Yeah. Now Ian is taking some of his time. Um, yeah, I'm trying. I'm just trying to under understand this position. So I, I put up my. Lich's master database, and there is no position up to King G2, so I'm just going to export this position to my computer and yeah. then see if they have some position like this happened in the previous games. What do you think, Eric? Yeah, I was checking, mm -hmm. I was checking with the Lich's master's database, and it seemed like on move 12, when Hikaru played mm -hmm. G3, this is the first like very rare move. Only saw mm -hmm. one game previously that had entered this position is between two kind of unknown players around master level. Um, but based on the speed of the players, it seems like both Hikaru and Nepo are like very clearly deeply prepared in this line. And when Nepo responded with a5, this was a novelty according to the Lee Chess Masters database. But we see a common theme across a lot of the games uh, throughout this tournament is even when players are reaching fresh positions according to the database that have never been reached before, they're still very, very well prepared. And especially in these sharper lines with what we saw unfold with knight takes f2 and bishop takes mm -hmm. h7 and queen takes b7 and a8, uh, it seems like probably both of these players have had this uh, the current position on their computer at some point. Maybe Nepo is just trying to remember his preparation being the first one to take a, a longer think here. I have done my own research and the position up to G3 was played in a dozen of games and there are so many mm. there are so many good players I can name it. Actually none of the players are below 2600. Um, oh wow. Okay. So maybe position. it's more recent recently Yeah, it's trendy. more recent, yeah. Um and the oldest game in this variation was in 2022 that was played between Yu Yang Yi versus Ilya Nishnik. And mm. Hans Niemann played twice in this position oh. as white. Um, mm. Chaparinov, Bernatsky, and Yishipenko. So mm. quite a lot of good names there. I mean, strong players uh, playing in this position. But after G3, none of them played what Ian did in this position that is a5 so um the f4 moves that was already played in this position first is b6 queen c8 bishop a5 and bishop e6 so a5 might be quite um not a surprise maybe more like it's it's it's, it's never been played before but i'm sure if hikaru is willing it is willing to enter into this variation he must have explored other possibilities that's not not being played yet so um, I don't have any more after a5, of course, because um, this is the new stuff that Ian played. Um, because as, as I mentioned, normally people would play queen c8 or bishop a5, attacking the rook or bishop e6. Um, still trying to f understand what queen bishop e6 is, but all, all other moves we can tell the we can tell the ideas. But uh, a5, a5 is quite a shocking move, but. Hikaru was not hesitant. After a5, he played knight bd2 right away, and it seems like they have somewhere like this on their clouds. 
And yeah, it's pro- probably all just zero, 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 zeros. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, there, yeah, we have now some moves. So Bishop G4 has been played and now Queen B7 back. So Hikaru and, I mean, and Ian still, still going strong with their preparation at this point. So, I mean, but this, this can get exciting because once one of them gets out of this pile they have, we have such imbalanced position, so oh. we could see a blunder at some point. Yeah, after yeah? g3, no, 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 I was just, after g3, a5, knight bd2, bishop e6. I was just thinking, could there be any transposition if um, if we play bishop e6 first, followed by knight bd2 and a5? I was just trying to check. Mm-hmm. Because bishop e6, there are so many players playing this position, instead of g3, actually. Um mm. No, knight bd2, bishop e6, and yeah, there's no g3. So this is kind of like a new nuance that, that Hikaru is offering in this position. g3, bishop e6, I'd say. Yeah, knight bd2, no. Couldn't find anything. Hmm. Well? Well, yeah, new stuff. Novelty is happening here on the candidates. I mean, that's expected. But okay, we... we kind of predicted the draw today but also we kind of predicted it might be a wild game so but what what do we do here with black let's say we don't have the file mm-hmm. in the formula she has what's the material count first of all we are an exchange <laughs> down right we're exchange down yes um so we have to be concrete now yeah pawns are equal exchange down uh king is kind of a bit exposed there <laughs> on g2 yeah but what else? I mean, yeah, I have these two bishops. I, I want white's king on black squares just so I can take the queens <laughs> on b7. This queen on b7 is out of the game, but that's why queen b7 was played. It's going back to b3, defending the king. We can't really stop that. Even if we play a4, just queen is going to b4. So what what can we do? Eric. Yeah, I'm idea. I'm actually struggling to come up with a candidate move for black. Exactly. I mean, the move I want to play is like queen f5, but of course the queen yeah. on d7 is tied down to the bishop, and the knight on b8 can't easily develop with the queen on d7. And the knight on h3 seems a little bit stuck as well. Yeah. So yeah. like maybe f5 comes to mind? Idea f4? Get I like that. Play. I I like that to open the f file to to take advantage that f three knight is not defended by the pawn. So I like f five. Yeah. So this f five, yeah, you would say just f five. But then we have. I to mean, that's just happens. one option. I'm I'm wondering yeah. if there's any other thing that Black can consider here. I think. I mean, I don't. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. It's okay. No, I just don't want. No, I mean, I don't like knight e five uh, after f five. So then the other knight from d2 is going to f3 and we suddenly develop the c1 bishop. That's the only thing I don't like, no? Yeah. And e5 maybe looks a bit annoying. I mean, perhaps f6 as an idea as well, just more prophylaxis against the knight from hopping in. Eric, you are missing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no, where are you, Eric? Sorry about that. Where are you, Eric? Uh, let me fix my camera. No worries. Yeah, in this in this position, um, I think. Hang on, there you go. Hey, Eric is back. <laughs> yeah, in this position, I yeah, I, I don't like the position of this knight because it looks like it is around the white king, but it doesn't really help the position so much for black. So I would actually return it back to f two, with the idea of checks here maybe, and then put it on g four because you still cannot take it right. And now if you move your queen, I think I can just... Oh, they already played some moves, which not our moves. Uh, yeah, as usual, <laughs> as usual. I think I'm happy to just trade the knight like this because I like I like my light square bishop having uh, quite like mm-hmm. very free diagonal. But Ian replied with rook e8, offering another exchange and trying to um, get the file for himself. Yeah, and I guess we three. should just show the line. Yeah. Sorry yeah. to cut you off, Laura, but 
there, there's a move here. Rook takes e8. It looks like white is winning a piece mm -hmm. because the queen on d7 appears to be overworked. But if white plays rook takes e8, then there's queen takes e8, queen takes e7, and then queen e2. And this should be uh, just mating for flak because even queen takes f3 here, not oh, bishop takes f3. Really? We really have to rub it in. Flashy, oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, my queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So this this was the idea. So that's why after rook e8, you don't want to get um, any of the major piece on the e file. So um, Hikaru just moved the queen back to b3, trying to control the back rank. And what is the continuation if, okay, this is black to move. Can you try to do something with the knight on b8 or is it knight a6, knight b4, for example? Hmm. Knight a6 is queen d3 with a double attack. That's true. Yeah, yeah how I, hmm, can we take on e1 somehow and try to weaken the squares like get to f2? But again, queen d3 is coming anyhow. Yeah. Oh, but, if I had to play this without knowing the theory, I would like I would be so uncomfortable. But Laura, we shouldn't trust Eric so much. Um, he was just bluffing. <laughs> okay, I'll just go knight a six, and then we stop after queen d three. But what if I offer you? Oh, actually, I want to play queen f five, which doesn't work because you can just simply take my queen. But <laughs> if 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 this was happened, yeah, if this was happening, like I can just take this and then get this position and even okay an animate yeah <laughs> but unfortunately <laughs> after queen d3 i cannot play queen f5 apparently no yeah, I, I don't think i'm bluffing here <laughs> I think, uh, <laughs> also in worst case yeah knight a6 what what do we do there in worst case why could have played a3 yeah and this yeah. knight on a6 is very useless so that's just not the approach to go for I think we have to be aggressive. We need to be aggressive. I mean, come on, we are aggressive players. Let's okay, go. Okay. We got this. I'm channeling my <laughs> aggressive side here. Um, okay. What, do? what if? What if we can go bishop f3, knight f3? I oh, know. No, we cannot. I wanted to go knight f4, but maybe we can start with knight f4. <laughs> Knight f4 and then... No, I think we're just... No, just I'm just thinking. imagining stuff. Yeah, I'm just trying to, to be extra aggressive, but somehow, you know, this queen on b3 is suddenly becoming a beautiful defensing piece, defending piece. Yeah, yeah I... queen d3 is uh, one of the ideas for sure, just trying to get the queen over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should we? Just I actually go? wonder. Yeah. Sorry about Bishop F five, just simply preventing Queen D three. Yeah. And then getting the Bishop to a slightly more central square. Mm. And what is White doing next? Maybe Knight E five. And. But I, I like this position. It it offers so many possibilities for black, despite having an exchange down. And I just like a pair of bishops. And I know you do too, <laughs> Laura, right? So yeah. even though we, we are currently exchanged down, but yeah, the dynamic between these two bishops, especially the light square bishop, it's, it's a very dangerous bishop to be on the free diagonal like on e4 for mm -hmm. example if you can put the bishop on e4 safely without the knight on d2 it's just amazing yeah we wish we wish to do that but yeah i think it's up to jan now I, do you think he's still in his prep he's been thinking now for he he took 25 minutes yeah for all his moves so far am i right let me check so 130 no we have five minutes five minutes i mean no um, i mean for overall, all the moves. Overall, yeah, 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 yeah. Close to 30 minutes, actually. That's that's interesting, no? Uh, you spend so so much time, even if you know the, the theory. It's very clear that Hikaru is still prepped. Like, he played queen b3 yeah. instantly. Putting pressure maybe on Jan, just like uh, emotionally, you know, psychologically. Like, I know stuff, and you maybe don't. <laughs> 
it's always fun, isn't it? It's a nice spot to be, yeah. When you you're basically letting that your your pregame prep play itself, and Jan is basically having to play against Stockfish here. Hmm. Yeah, I I have no idea what to do with Black. Honestly, I I just don't know. Maybe I would just go King J just to avoid any checks. <laughs> But that's probably way too slow for this position. I'm actually wondering about f6 here. Because, yeah, this 95 idea is kind of annoying. f6, maybe it's a little bit slow, but the idea is just preventing 95. Mm -hmm. If queen d3, black can play bishop f5. It's a move just to put the ball back in white's court. Why no one suggesting just taking on e5 simply? I mean, e, Taking not, not e5, e1. Sorry. Yeah, because but what do we take, do? Then you, you move your knight back. Hmm. hmm. That would make sense, but I guess then knight from d2 goes to f3 or something. At least now we have this square. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you wanted to go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I just, that, I just want to go be... for some activity of my minor pieces. Okay. Yeah, I actually, I actually like this idea very much. Because if I play queen f5 here, I don't like my queen being exchanged like after this one, queen d3, right? Yeah. I uh, don't see anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the king is on h7. Otherwise, queen f5 mm, would have been a, a good move there. So yeah, just knight g5. Yeah, it looks playable. Yeah. I mean, the drawback for white is all these light squares are weak. And of course, if the knight and bishop can coordinate for black, then light squares are going to be a constant hassle. Also, uh, additionally, how do you stop me from entering e2 if I play queen e6? And there's queen d3 first. Yeah, but then I have bishop f5. Queen f1. Queen f1. Oh, this one is hanging, but I cannot take it yet, yeah? Oh, queen f3 also, yeah. I, I mentioned queen f1 to defend the knight, but this is maybe more active. I guess this walks into knight g5, though. This can walk into some repetition, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, hopefully we don't see repetition so early in this yeah. game. But here there is knight yeah. g5, yeah. Or, oh, maybe, hang on. What about, what about knight f4? But you have queen h5 in the end. I don't like it. Like, if I play oh. this, it looks like just nice. But then you have this in the end. Oh. Maybe there is nothing. Maybe it's just a perpetual, I don't know. But maybe not, because knight after is there. Ah, oh, but this one is here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mixed feelings there. I'm just I'm just looking for I mean I'm sure this, this position is still like zero 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 according to engine. Um I'm just trying to understand like where is this zero zero zero? Because usually according to the book that I read by Matthew <laughs> Sadler himself who commentated a, a few games with me here. Like, uh, in his book you mentioned in Game Changer, uh, there are so many complicated positions which ended up with a draw. I mean, of course, you don't put Lila or Alpha Zero there, but just uh, the mainstream engines like Stockfish, Komodo, Houdini, all these engines. And then, for some reason, all the complicated lines, they... they they just put zero 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 because um, they always prefer to go for some sort of a very very random repetition. So I'm just trying to channel my inner I mean channel my <laughs> inner engine brain into this, which might be or most likely wrong, but uh, looks interesting. So yeah, after queen e6, Eric, you mentioned about queen f1 as well. Yeah, after queen d3, queen f1. Oh, you cannot do that. I have this knight f5 and then bishop h3 back. Ooh. Tactics, tactics, tactics Eric. Tactics. But tactics. is there king g1? King g1, queen, uh, queen oh, e3. Probably queen e3. Yeah, it looks very scary, king h1. And also I have knight e2. I mean, of course, I have to calculate, right? But there there are many options here. And then, yeah, but mm -hmm. maybe queen a3 is the best anyway. King h1? King h1. I actually um, like, we can go maybe knight h3 here, but I actually like knight e2 because then we, we can even take on d4 with a knight. Oh. Yeah, this oh. looks terrible for white. One mm. grammar, yeah, yeah, it's terrible. I can play bishop <laughs> h3 here, right? Or maybe even. Uh, yeah, it might work. Queen here. Queen g1, yeah. 
<laughs> still, yeah, still going on. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, it's wild, wild stuff going on. She'll be, she'll be winning. She'll be winning at some point. Yeah, this this looks like a very reasonable plan for Black. He's still yeah. thinking Yando after Queen B3. But rookie one, yeah, we so far, this idea and even knight g5 or queen e6, they both seem very, very, very reasonable. I like rookie one, just rook takes, I mean, yeah. for, for black, just rook takes e1, knight takes e1, and then get your queen to the play, uh, queen e6. And you cannot, yeah, if you if you move mm -hmm. your knight, I, I have this anyway. Yeah. So you have to stop me from playing queen e2. So I think this is, I mm -hmm. think it's almost like kind of force. The, the line that we saw here and then here and then where does the queen go i think queen f3 is a quite um yeah force and now and can we mm -hmm. can we now just go g6 to stop queen h5 ideas at some point and threaten knight g5 now or yeah. something so yeah we can we can also suggest other moves but i just want to mention first yeah, yeah, yeah. and then to remind again if ian wants to make a draw there's always this one yeah but um, yeah, in this position, let's try your move, Laura. G6, and then, oh, you want to play knight G5? Yeah, yeah, this looks very dangerous. And not to mention, queen takes E1 is also probably yeah. a threat here. Oh yeah, yeah. queen takes E1, yeah. of course, of course. No, yeah, interesting. Oh, this game can develop oh, in a very interesting way, for sure. It can get exciting. Uh, of course, yeah. But I'm just wondering that after queen B3, is there anything else that we missed? Because the last position that we saw is no. just very good for yeah. black. Rookie one was played actually, so yes, we yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. We might see some of our calculation on the board. Oh, you'd that's... imagine Hikaru is prepared for this. Like of he's going to yeah. be looking into the concrete lines. Oh, there's also this one. Oh, no, no, no. I was thinking of queen, queen c2, but there's bishop f5. So queen d3. Knight e1 is, by the way, already on the board. We're going to see if Ian play queen e6 or not, which I think should be the best move in this position. Mm -hmm. I guess he will... Okay, he's probably just double-checking because when you take rook e1, you need to have immediate response after right. knight e1. Yeah, queen d3 so far is, um, to me, looks like the only response. Like, okay, check here. Bishop f5, and then queen has to go here. Hmm. But then with even a, a simple move like g6, or even if you don't want to have mm -hmm. any checks at all, let's say you play king g8, it's still like a very nice position for black. I like it. Yeah, we like it. We like the bishop pair. So, and these weak squares around the king. Um. Yeah. 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 So okay. Yeah. Let's say knight d three, and then now you have knight g five. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let's see what you play after knight g five. Just wondering. Yeah, it should be something that's very really concrete. Is there another four here? Counterattack? Um, I Nine was four. thinking, but can I go something like queen e1? And check threatening some kind of checkmate. That looks really scary. I mean, queen f2. Also, if, also a move like bishop takes, I think. You would yeah. have some problem with it too. Like check here, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This looks I don't scary. know. Or bishop h3 first. But maybe g6 is a better move than king h7. But I mean, just looking at this position, you are playing with three pieces compared to two pieces because this is, doesn't work. Okay, b8 doesn't work as well. Um, but yeah. Hmm. But we have to keep in mind that Hikaru is like willingly going into yeah. such a line. He's been blitzing out every move. And you'd imagine that he's going to be the one pushing for an edge, but maybe he's also accepting a lot of risk entering such a position with his king uh, getting mm -hmm. attacked on the king's side. 
You think he has some forced draw in mind? I think so. I think so too. He wouldn't, yeah, he wouldn't enter this position if he just calculate everything on the board, because this this required like a very um, intense preparation beforehand. Oh, queen e six is already on the board, oh my guys. We're on the right track, <laughs> and queen d three, yay! I think I'm ready. instantly still, guys. I think I'm ready to play my first candidate. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, your engine, you said you were channeling your inner engine. Well, your inner engine is definitely working, you know. So, Irene, next candidates. I gotta give a shout out to Matthew for, you know, yeah. shaping my way of thinking. Because his <laughs> way of thinking is pretty much like engine these days. Because I think when you are, um, when you are playing with the engines in your daily basis, you know, you kind of like understand what sort of moves, what sort of diffraction that they are thinking. And it's usually walking on the thin thread, but that is the only way to win or the only way to make a draw, for example. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but but this is this is a lucky guess, guys. This is a lucky guess. I mean, this looks like rookie one, knight e1, queen e6, it looks very obvious. No, it was definitely not luck. It just it was, it, this is knowledge and intuition intuition so, more like intuition yeah. not knowledge Laura. <laughs> <laughs> you know what for intuition to work you need knowledge so <laughs> no well i do you think we're gonna see bishop f5 or do you think he uh sorry jan will go g6 immediately maybe even bishop, i think bishop f5 bishop is very F5. direct it's, it's yeah. very natural as well like if you if you have this position on the board when you're playing a blitz game i think 99 percent mm -hmm. of the players would just play bishop f5 yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, very fun. <laughs> Eric, don't be too quiet. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking we've only looked at two games thus far out of uh, out of the eight that are ongoing, but the two games we've looked at have been so exciting that yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been, I think, well worth our time. But maybe we should move on to some of the other games while Nepo... Uh, I... Ponders I would just like position. to mention there's a French defense. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that too. Prakdananda. Abby versus Prak. <laughs> and right. uh, before you say anything, I'm still happy to have this position on the board because recently I recommended this line to my 10 year old student. <laughs> SY, <laughs> SY. Advanced variation. Yeah, this variation, this advanced variation with A3, and then Fabi mm. just played exactly. So I can tell, I can tell to them, like, look, even a 2800 Grandmaster played the line that I recommended to you. You should be proud. And yes, <laughs> Bishop P2, Knight here, and then going to A4. So this was the key. So I'm, I'm pretty happy to have this idea with Knight F4 on the. Um, on the on this game because then uh well now we have another another recommended game to follow right and i think mm -hmm. this is this is the key actually if you don't play knight a5 in this position and after mm -hmm. black uh, after white has this idea on the board with knight a4 knight c5 then white is just standing very comfortably uh because you don't have any any counter attack so that's why you you have to play knight a5 in the right time and then putting it on c4 whether or not you're gonna lose this pawn later, so, I don't know. I'm I'm speaking for Laura actually, but because Laura is the is a French player, so um, you can you can always tell me that I'm wrong, Laura. But this is I think no, no, no. the best defense yeah, that Black can do because otherwise, if you just have uh, the knight on c4, knight on c5 without any counter attack with knight c4, yeah. then white is yeah. just better. Yeah. And bishop yeah, yeah. No, c3 you're on spot, yeah, b6 and here. So just imagine having the knight on c5. But the black knight is still on c6. You wouldn't have this idea with the uh, with the b6 because then your queen kind of trapped. So here, actually, everyone is playing. I think their best preparation. Normally, you wouldn't like to take the bad bishop on d7, but I think this is like a concrete preparation by Fabiano. Um, mm -hmm. So knight d7, queen d7, bishop d3, g6, and queen e2. Okay. So so far, I think it is. It's still according to White's preparation. What is, I would I would say because I'm not a French player, um, mm -hmm. I like I like the position of White in this position. But tell me, Laura, from your French perspective, <laughs> uh, how comfortable are you playing this position as Black? Um, well, I would say that these advanced variations these days are the best approach against the French. Mm -hmm. 
So I like, I also like what Fabi is doing. Actually, I I learned this file like 10 years ago already. And I think I have terrible score with black um, because, yeah, it's re- very concrete. And you see this G6, you get some weak squares around the king, these black squares, and you're always scared for H- H4, H5 to come. But this knight on C4 is doing the job. We don't have the white squared bishop anymore. So we... Yeah, I think it's I think it's fine. I mean, I think Pagnananda wouldn't play that if it wasn't fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, Fabi spent ten minutes on Queen E two or something like that. Let's Maybe see. Even 15. Uh, yeah, 15. yeah, about sixteen minutes. Yeah. Sixteen minutes. Yeah, so Queen E two. So that means Fabi might be out of prep. I mean, he still knows what he's doing, but that's. <clears throat> Yeah, um, I don't know, like, what do you think? Okay, I know you said you liked white, and Eric, we would pick white or black in this position. Yeah, generally, I'm more happy with white in these positions, especially, mm. like, it feels weird playing the French and black playing g6. Yeah. Because usually the bishop develops, like, to e7, yeah. and, uh, like, very often in these advanced structures, black goes for this f6 break. Yes. But yeah. with black committing to g6, then it doesn't look like f6 is likely to happen anytime soon. <laughs> no. I imagine the point is to maybe establish the knight on f5, like get the knight to f5. And I'm curious if the bishop is actually going to develop to g7, or maybe we'll see knight f5 and bishop e7. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I think g7 is fine, and then we castle, and then we can play f6. Or f5 even sometimes. But yeah, this bishop then can always be so out of the game, I feel like. So Yeah. Well, um Queen E2 in this position, it looks kind of like a natural move to make, right? Also another natural move to make is I think castle. But mm-hmm. um I was just trying to move to to find a reason why Fabi uh, spent 16 minutes on this move. Is I think he was just choosing a strategy to continue this position because mm-hmm. he'd like to have some uh move to to face bishop g7 in castle. So he's waiting. He's waiting for his opponent to really set up for the castle, let's say bishop g7 and so on. And then he, therefore he would just start um doing this h4 mm-hmm. and uh h5, not necessarily castle, because you can always create um an artificial castle by doing like g3 and then king here and here but i think the rook meant to be on the h file if black castle so i think in the next few moves he would make um quite um a useful waiting move until black castles then he can pursue with this h4 h5 and so on because if he started now what if after like h4 and then after let's say not bishop g7 but bishop h6 Mm -hmm. and then the king stands in the center because this would be like not really into the what he wanted maybe and maybe Mm -hmm. yeah bear in mind this bishop is is unprotected too and there might be some idea with um actually i was thinking maybe this is the idea just to play bishop g7 and then a a discovery with knight e5 yes yes so queen e2 is also yeah queen e2 is also a prevention to that like after bishop uh, G7 happens, then you can focus on other things too because this is no longer a threat because you can just keep taking and after queen takes, the rook on H8 is hanging. So I'm, let me just show the example. Let's say I play H4 here and then knight here and then knight here and then I'm hitting your your queen. So you have to take this one first and after queen takes E5, you cannot take C3 because the rook on H8 is hanging. So I like this queen to move. It's a multi-purpose move. You are developing your queen. You are you are doing a prophylactic move to your opponent's threat, but also it's a waiting move to see what your opponent will come up. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this is this is a so nice move. Mm-hmm. I have one more explanation of Queen E2. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. as you were explaining all of that, uh, I, I was trying to like further understand this move and. I imagine one of the plans for white in this position is to reposition this dark squared bishop, which is doing absolutely nothing on <laughs> c3. It's just blocked in by its pawns. And I'm wondering if Fabi 
maybe has the idea in mind to play bishop d2. Ah, and bishop d2 is actually a it's a legal move in the previous position before queen e2. But if bishop d2 is played immediately, there's knight to b2. So I'm wondering if queen e2 is perhaps setting up this bishop mm -hmm. d2 idea to eventually exploit the dark squares on the king's side. That is interesting, but mm -hmm. oh, I think Laura will agree with me because we are such a player <laughs> with a pair of bishop. We'd like to keep the bishop, even <laughs> though after bishop d2, I agree. I totally agree. This bishop doesn't worth more than the knight on c4. So maybe yeah. a trade would be to white's advantage. This can be an idea, but also potentially what can be the idea is if this bishop transfers to this diagonal, then we can have this diagonal to ourselves. Maybe start with a4 and then b5 and then put the bishop on, on b4 instead of d2. So that was also my thinking because what else would you like to plan after after you play g6? It's very natural to put this bishop on this uh, fianchero position. And then once the bishop is no longer controlling this, then we can do what I was uh, was mentioning before. Like before uh, a4, bishop, uh, b5 and then put the bishop on, on b4. And maybe... Our idea with h4, h5 is not actually not really a good idea. So, I don't know. <laughs> Queen e2 offers lots of flexibility in, in what's position right now. And it is up to Pragnananda yeah. to choose the strategy. Yeah, I Eric mentioned knight f5 immediately. And now that I'm looking at it more and more, could, could it be also the idea in case bishop f5 we're opening the g file and playing this way? Mm. Probably, probably that's fine i'm not sure so maybe knight to five we're, we're we might see that on the board actually knight f5 now yeah knight yeah. f5 there is g4 yeah there's g4 oh. and then you, i'm just hitting the, the knight and i down. cannot yeah yeah if if i had my bishop on e7 maybe i could go knight h4 but i mm -hmm. cannot do that so that makes sense yeah so a prague is but thinking maybe Maybe there's h5 first, just mm. discouraging g4. And this is a kind of typical setup as black has all the pawns on light squares, but it restricts white from actually expanding with the pawns on the king side. Hmm. Okay. And then okay, that f5 next. Yeah. I don't I don't okay. really see I'm sorry, but I don't really see the point of knight f5 anyway. It looks really good, but then um, I think I will just divert all the attention to the queen side. And when you have your knight on f5, then what's next? You're not really hitting on d4 because it is, mm -hmm. it is heavily protected. But what I was thinking is maybe maybe Prague will divert its attention to the try to prepare something on the queen side instead. So for example, in this one, I'm, I'm thinking of playing b5 myself and then somehow putting the knight over here and then b6, mm -hmm. something like this. And then, and then therefore... I know G6 is not really, now I'm thinking G6 is not really a fianchero idea for the bishop. Mm. Maybe it's just a prevention for this bishop h7 with knight g5 and something like that. And maybe the bishop can just stay on, on e7. So I would actually suggest that some idea on the on the queen's side instead of on the king's side. That's that's my, my hunch. Maybe rook c7 because this is, I don't know, just a preparation <laughs> with knight b Knight c8 later, and then this one, and then knight b6. So whenever there is a a4, mm -hmm. let's say, at least this yeah. one is hanging. Now I can hit it with with knight c6 because my knight is ready to mm -hmm. hit it like that, and after like yeah. this, and uh, some complication like that. So yeah, after b5, that would be my idea, just to put the knight on here, and then keeping an eye on this um, diagonal because I don't like any of this one to move like what I mentioned before and then giving a diagonal for the bishop. So yeah, that's my take on this position. So you would play b5 as I, black? I think I'd play b5. Uh-huh. Because I'm, I'm wondering, um, I mean, b5, it looks like it has a lot of benefits for black, but the one drawback is a c5 square. Yeah. So I, I'm just wondering about b5, knight d2. In this position, maybe, oh, can I... Yeah, I can take, right? Is there, is there bishop takes b5? Yeah, you're right. And maybe I can mud the water by playing this one first, takes and then knight here. No, this is, this, sacrifice. Is, this is, this is, this is, I don't mm. like, yeah. Yeah, so you want to go here, yeah? And maybe... I just want to give black a taste of their own medicine, establish <laughs> an outpost on the c file. This yeah. is interesting because what if I play, I don't know, I'm still thinking... Something like this. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this. Ooh. I like this. Okay, There's you, still you can take B5. Oh, you want to take yeah. B5. Okay, let's show this one first. And in this position, I'd like to just take on this and then just play this position. Or oh, maybe this is not a great position for black anyway. <laughs> but this is interesting. What's material? White's up the exchange. White up, up an exchange. Mm -hmm. Knight of three. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think this is good. Uh, but maybe, who knows? Uh, yeah, but it's nice to sacrifice the pieces when it's not your game. So yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that kind of ideas. Um, yeah, no, knight d two is strong. So I think if b five was the idea, g six wouldn't have to be played, would it? At least not immediately. Like g six had to have some deeper idea mm -hmm, mm -hmm. behind it. Ah, maybe. I mean, that's 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 what I'm wondering about. Yeah, so maybe because, it's bishop yeah. h6 just to get this diagonal for the bishop. I don't know. I have no idea. Because I mean, for Donanda, this looks pretty good as well. Yeah. It's um, preparing yeah. for any any discovery like knight three, for example. Mm. And yeah, there are many could be. many strategies that black can choose in this position, and you have to be really exact because it is only. Uh, white in this position that can be very comfortable, you know, with, with any sort of moves without any thinking. Like, you can just play the next move, castle. H3 or, okay, H3 is uh, such a stupid move, but uh, you know what I mean. Like, you can just play any move here as white without really have to worry about your position because it is just pleasant. And then it is black who is, um, who must do all the work to figure out what white is uh, intending to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm seeing there were some moves made uh, between Hikaru and Yan, and I think it was what we were oh, calculating. Queen, Queen F1. Okay, so there yeah. must be something amiss in our position, and Queen F1 yeah. turns to be like a pretty good move. Of Weren't what we happened? talking about Knight F4 or something? Yeah, and then F4. What? And. And then what? King we, we were looking at this earlier. Yeah. I think we saw King G1 earlier. Uh, King G1 and then Queen E3. And maybe now it's the time to play King F2. Hmm. King F2 looks so messed <laughs> up for white, but maybe it's it's okay. <laughs> mm. It's it's surprising. But, then, but Knight H3 back could just be repetition, right? Yeah, That's true. For That's sure. true. And nothing, Gosh. nothing over here. Yeah, I'm just going to be a bit too brave. Yeah, Bishop G two <laughs> here. Yeah, and now we can also again, and then if we want to, yeah. <laughs> if we want to. Okay, so let's say Knight F four. Yeah, so oh. King G one. We were talking about Knight E two or Queen E three, but yes. Could it be because of this? And after hmm. this, like this, and then you just go for this end game, because this looks like no. Well, white no. white doesn't have any material yeah, or yeah. enough material for the queen. This is not yeah. the move. Okay, so after knight f4, where else can you go? King h1, maybe. Let's see king h1, just just to see what's going on. Bishop h3. Mm -hmm. Bishop h3. Okay, queen has to guard. Oh the... yeah. So it's queen f2 or queen g1. Yeah. Let's say queen f2 first. Yeah, maybe white's actually holding here. Like bishop g2 doesn't work. And knight controls g2. Yeah. And meanwhile, the knight on f4 is attacked. Interesting. Wow, what a prep. And I'm just looking at the time situation after queen f1. You see that... Nakamura is still one hour and four, uh, 54 minutes, so he only spent less than six minutes for this position. I mean, up to this position, and Ian already spent almost <laughs> an hour. Wow, well, so... we've seen that uh, when uh, Jan played against Pragananda, mm -hmm. and we've seen Prague was also so, so well prepared, and Jan was an hour down, but managed to save it because Prague couldn't find the exact way to continue. But Hikaru's still in his prep, right? So that thing's so uh, yeah. That's that's a bit different now. It's hard job for Jan. 
No, this is tough. This is tough when you are playing against your opponent's computer, right? Um, still in the <laughs> yeah. prep. So I just, I just can't imagine how much work all these players um, have to do prior to their games. Not only before the games, but just in general preparation at home. Uh, like how many lines, how many variations that they have to update themselves in order not to get into this type of situation that Ian is currently having. Because it is always unpleasant to play against your opponent's preparation or, or your or your, or your um, opponent's mm. computer. So we'll keep an eye after queen f1. So it turns out that after knight f4, we can just safely play king h1, right? And mm -hmm. then there's almost mm, almost nothing. Is bishop like this? I think you can just yeah. simply take and then play knight f3, and then the position is pretty safe for, for white now. So, okay. Uh, what if we see another position, another game that hasn't been talked yet in the open section? Mm -hmm. Uh, that is very, very quiet. So I don't think we'll be talking much about it because um, the game goes with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and we see a rule of pass here, Berlin. So Fidit, Fidit already played his Berlin against Ian, where Ian showed a really nice prep um, on round number three, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, here, d3, bishop c5, takes, takes, and then castle. So, yeah, this type of position has been played numerous times, but most of the times it always ended up with a draw. Uh, it might be a long game, but uh, yeah, it offers equality for both sides. So I don't think we miss much in this position. <laughs> Why don't we update ourselves on the game between Al Reza versus Gukesh? It's, um, oh. There's an incredible move played after h4. Oh, Ruja put his rook on h3. <laughs> yes, so oh, we saw so the much position fun. after h4 and knight bd7 rook h3 and bishop e7 wow laura eric please enlighten <laughs> me what what should we do here if we were playing with white pieces let's and go usually eric you see first. this yeah. in like in total <laughs> noobs games error command <laughs> yeah. i mean command error <laughs> i shouldn't that's okay I shouldn't say both <laughs> of your names at the same time <laughs> one by one one by one um laura first Laura. No, no, no. I said, Eric, go first, please. Oh, I need to first. think. <laughs> okay, Eric, please. What's, what's your yeah, thinking? I was just gonna say, like, usually when someone is they they know nothing about openings. There, there's a lot of like total noobs that will play h4 and rook h3 early on because they they think their rooks are are fun to develop <laughs> first. But we're seeing this here at the highest level of of chess. <laughs> uh, Ali Reza developing his rook to h3. Um, he's not casting this game. He's already moved both rooks. His king is staying in the center. But yeah, in this position, uh, uh, where else is a rook going other than g3? It looks like he wants to play rook g3 at some point to target the pawn on g7. But it seems like Gukesh is having none of it. He's just developing normally with bishop e7. And rook g3 immediately, I think, just walks into knight h5 with a fork. So, mm. I mean, I usually like to explore these sort of things, but I don't fully see the point of White's development in this exact position. Mm. Yeah, it's for sure interesting way to to play Rook H3 immediately because is Black Castling short or not? That's also a question. I, I guess he's saving h5 spot for something, otherwise h5 could have been played already instead of rook h3. And I'm also yeah, I'm also thinking, okay, what what does he want to do? I guess not, okay, knight e5 is something very thematic to be played in this type of position, and then g4. But do you really need your rook on h3 for that? Um what's what's the real did he just want to scare Gukesh? <laughs> yeah uh well bishop e7 is a quite natural move to make yeah. um but i think it would be depending on which book you are reading as a beginner right eric if you're reading uh the books that telling like the unusual or thematic rook lift um idea <laughs> then then and this is what we have on the board but uh what's surprising me is usually this type of rook lift um uh, you can play it when your opponent already set up in a castle. Like 
namely in the short castle, then you can mm -hmm. you can you can commit with rook h3. But here the king is still in the center. So and you already committed yourself for not castling by playing rook h3 and then possibly attacking the g file. But again, this is this is Alvareza has has been playing uh the moves that violating all the principles that I've learned before. So um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this room yeah. H3 thematic idea in London, of course, we see it many times too, but usually the king is already castled. But here, I have bishop is 7 Maybe castle is still fine. Maybe there is nothing wrong in the position um, of blacks. So it's still a long way to go. But this is an interesting decision that, that Ali Reza played there. Yeah, I mean, the idea could also be... If we go knight e5, that one day we take bishop b5 and go knight d3, and then we have the knight protected because knight on d3 is just a perfect knight in mm. these kind of structures. Yeah. What but there? yeah, I, I'm really um, weirded out a bit by his move order in that case. I would have just went knight e5 immediately. I mean, he has an idea behind it for sure. So this position, yeah, just knight e5. Yeah, just seems slightly more natural, but... I'm sure he has something that he wants to prevent or or play after rook h3. I just don't... What to prevent uh, here? I'm still also trying to understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... that's Yeah, me too. <laughs> I want to ask him. You know, yesterday I wanted to ask him about taking on f2. Yeah. Eric, you saw you saw that game? Uh, uh, with Prusa. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of That's course. That's Sicilian. Oh, mm -hmm. What's what's your opinion on this F to pawn grab? I think part of it was is just tilt, like the fact um. that he's not in good form clearly, and mm -hmm. he was moving a, a bit too quickly just out of the opening. It seemed like everything went wrong for him yesterday, and taking on F two was just a culmination of of him not being in the right mental state. And I'm wondering if we're seeing that again today with h4, rook h3. Like on one hand, this could be considered mm -hmm. brilliant if he somehow makes ideas mm -hmm. work, but it can also just be a sign that he's just going insane and losing his composure. So we'll have to wait and see here. Yeah, but I like it. I, I like his approach today. I mean, we we kind of called London today, so it cannot end badly. That's my opinion. <laughs> Also, you are talking about prevention after rook h3. Maybe it's also to make your opponent a bit reluctant to mm -hmm. to do some short castle because you already showed your intention with rook h3 mm -hmm. that you want to attack the king's side. So maybe this is not like a bad move at all. This is just maybe maybe still within his preparation. You never know because um, the range of of exploration of of these players. Um, in terms of preparation, we never know. It's it, it can be really wide, you know. It looks like it is just some random um position in the London's opening, but turns out this is still within his home preparation. So yeah, we'll see. This is going to be quite interesting to keep an eye on. Um should we take a look at what Eric has foreseen? <laughs> that this position between Fabiano versus Pragnananda, he called it perfectly with Bishop <laughs> oh. Nito idea. Oh, Eric, you're ready for your first candidate too. <laughs> well, yeah. also H5 from H5, Prague. H5, uh, yeah. I, think, yeah. Yeah. I think H5 was a very uh, pragmatic approach That's, for Black, just to yeah. be patient on the king's side. Yep, so we saw after the position, uh, after this move, Queen E2, and after H5, uh, Bishop D2. So yeah, preparing for this idea. I think it's because wow. both of you and Fabiano are based in San Luis, and you guys hang out together <laughs> quite a lot. Like me, trying to channel my inner engine via all the commentaries with Matthew Sadler. You are channeling your inner Fabi, maybe. <laughs> I just try and absorb all the the chess powers that these super GMs have. It's nice to be in close proximity. Right. <laughs> Yeah, this is such a nice idea. And especially now it makes sense having the pawn already pushed to h5, right? Because if the pawn if the pawn was on h6, for example, this bishop d2 was not really ap appealing anymore. 
or maybe still appealing, but not as much as the current position. Because now you can transpose it to g5 and then have this idea with bishop f6, which is a very thematic idea in this type of structure as well. So yes, I really like this idea now. Yeah, it's the yeah. idea of like trying to transform your worst piece into one of your best pieces. On c3, the bishop is just terrible. On f6, it's going to be a very deadly weapon. Not sure if we'll actually get there, but it's finding <laughs> finding at least a happier home. Yeah, yeah, and I wonder what Prague will come up with next because I get I don't know if it was he thinking about this bishop d two ideas at all. As probably in his preparation, Queen e two was not one of the moves in his file. Seen by, by how much time he spent on playing h five. So I guess this thematic is not really common, but very, very well predicted by you. I mean, I, I, I very much like it. And what do we do now with black? Do we exchange? Do we go bishop h6 and just not castle? Either um, those two, yeah. I think it's either knight takes d2 or bishop h6 now because I don't see yeah. any other moves. I, I I was still thinking nine f five. Like five. now that Prague oh. has prevented G four, nine f five might be more feasible. <laughs> hmm. Okay, but what are we doing with the knight on f five again? Yeah, this this classic question. I think you just leave it there. Like mm. it just puts constant pressure against D four. It's hard to remove. I mean, if White wants to take on f five with the bishop, then let him do that. And I I think yeah. the point would be just to put the bishop on e seven. And complete development. Yeah, yeah. I like this. I like this as well. Yeah. And I guess so okay. What I'll if we go to G five? You play yeah. Bishop E seven. Bishop E seven. Right. And if mm. I play this one? Oh, immediately. Mm, spicy. <laughs> can we take it? And yeah, Queen you D8? can. Queen D eight. Oh wow! What is this now? And takes this baby. But this, mm -hmm. yeah, knight on c4 stands too, too strong then. Yeah, maybe it's a bit too fast to, to play this type of move. Mm. So you want to play knight f5. I was thinking about some ideas of h3, g4. Of course, not now because the rook on h1 is unprotected. Uh -huh. Um. Oh, my cat, my cat arrived, so... Oh, <laughs> yeah, distracting me again in this French. Yeah, no, yeah. knight of five is just very reasonable, and I don't think that black is doing any worse than white. I it's it's absolutely mm, interesting position with interesting pawn structure, but I like I like it, and I'm very surprised that Prague chose French defense to play against Fabi. Oh, hello, hello there, hello, that's Max Max. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, do you have any cats? I don't have any uh, any pets that live oh. with me, but my my parents have a dog, so when I visit them, <laughs> oh. uh, get some some puppy love. And you, Irene, you don't have any no, pets? no, I don't. But I love animals. I love I love both cats and dogs. Um, but I think I'm into dogs these days. Um, uh. I also love cats too. It's just like I don't know. They're 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 like in the total. <laughs> uh, opposite to one another sometimes if you if yeah. you want some company you know yeah. yeah they offer different type of companies so <laughs> oh now she's uh yeah yeah for sure okay good should we move to some games in the woman section just to briefly check yes. what is going on there yes let's take a look at the game between Gretchen versus Tanzongi, the two leaders in the women's section Oh, this is this is a thematic um, two pawns in the center position. But let's take from the start. D4, D5, and then what we have here? Oh, the unusual third move by Black. Yeah, this A6 has gained some popularity in the past couple of years too. Uh, it gives flexibility in in Black's position. Uh, Bishop G5, Bishop E7 takes takes with the Queen, Knight BD2, and Knight F6. And then g3 castle, bishop g2, b6 castle, and c5. dc, bc, and queen c2. Yeah, so far it's it's been pretty 
normal yeah all the moves that being made you just want to keep pushing the pawns and then um protect it and ooh, knight f5 yeah very well timed and after rook b8 take stakes and then rook d1 double up the rook a5 knight g5 and queen e5 is on the board so now oh there might be some silent draw offer here like <laughs> goes back here and then go back here i mean it would be depending on if they're having some fighting spirit or not but as matthew recalled it they have this type of um like a rest day opening so you don't mm -hmm. want to walk into a rest day with a loss so it would be better if you just um share the victory you know just half a draw and then, yeah, for, so on the rest day, you can be quite relaxed. You, you didn't lose on the day before. And then you have a better mood for the upcoming round. So this might be it, actually, because I don't see any fireworks on this game so far. Yeah, it looks very solid for both sides. And I really don't see what else white does apart from knight of three in the current position. I mean, if h4... Black even has h6 just to kick the knight. Mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe it is time for a4. Having the queen over here, I think it's helpful to play rook e2 and then get this one. Do we have any tactics against like d5 and h7 given the knight on f6 is overworked? Oh, yeah, very well spotted. Yeah, maybe that is why Gorchkina is thinking right now. So let's say. You, how, how do you want to take this? Oh, you have to take it with the bishop, yeah? Otherwise, this is hanging on, on a1. Well, but, no, in oh, the no. current position, we have to defend the knight. Oh, you mean after h4, I see. Like h4 would... I don't even know if it threatens the bishop takes d5, though, because black can maybe take and mm -hmm. then run with the king. You think so? Check check here. That That's possible too, yeah? Hmm. But we see a different move played in yeah. the game. Uh, mm -hmm. Queen d2 is played, defending the knight, putting more pressure against d5. And a5, yeah. And a5. Doing all the same job. And what happens now if we go a5? Uh, a4, you mean? Oh, sorry, a4. Yeah, sorry. Do... Yeah. Bishop takes d5. There could be a lot of trades. Let's yeah. see, knight takes, queen takes, 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 and then <laughs> trade everything on b3. And although you because, can't take on b3 yeah. in the end, is black. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we have to move the knight, and then c5 is hanging, and then taking on b3. Because so this is not exactly first. what you want to do. Yeah. But then white is still having an extra pawn, yeah? Yeah, yeah so this is not exactly ideal. So maybe you kick we... the knight first, just. Not to mm -hmm. deal with it. But after knight f3, I think you are forced to play queen c7. Yeah. Or queen maybe... c7 or queen e7? Yeah, or queen e7 is also fine because e2 is hanging, yeah? Hmm. Like if queen takes here, you can take the e2 as well. Some trade the pawns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say just h6, and after this, now you think. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. It's nice that we're not seeing uh, an immediate repetition. Mm -hmm. And I think queen d2 is perhaps a sign that uh, Garachkina is playing more for just a draw in this middle game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is also very nice. I mean, she has a bishop, so... Bishop and knight working together against these hanging pawns. I guess, yeah, she's just a very strategic player. So she will try to attack these weaknesses because, you know, having pawns on a5 and then two pawns in the center like that can get difficult to defend, especially with queens on the board. And I, rook e8 on the board. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, attacking e2. And what do we do now? If we take on d5, we're not very happy, yeah. <laughs> because then we not exchange yeah. everything. You change everything. And yeah, then take on e2 at the end. It's annoying to I have mean, the rook on the second rank. Yeah, but we can go rook a d1, though. Not can't afraid. We? Okay, let's, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, rook on e2 is kind of too active to, to play for anything here. 
A rook takes good. c5? I mean, rook, rook c5, rook eight. Oh, I would just and go. Then rook c8. Oh. Just want to okay. go for the kill. I mean, there's each mm -hmm. six, but it looks promising for white. Knight h3? Oh, no. Knight h3, yeah. Because rook b4, yeah. And rook d8. Rook d d8 is kind of hard to stop. Maybe like this. But this is just Ooh. like this, maybe. Or you can also throw in this one first. And after this, and then this four. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, what to do here after bishop d5? I think you have to take either with the knight or with the queen. And then after mm -hmm. like this. Now I think you have to take again. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. too. Oh, maybe now it's this one, h6 first. Okay. Because you have to move. Let's say the, the knight goes somewhere like this. Now we can take this. So mm -hmm. whenever the, something like this happens, I can put the knight forward, yeah. not backward. Yeah. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah. And after this, then I can take this. And this is better for, I think, still equal. But I think this is better for black, actually, because then this pawn is quite. Mm. Although, mm, I can argue with this. <laughs> yeah. And then just I, total draw. Yeah. Yeah, just draw. I think that's that's a good prediction for that position. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so what are we doing then on rookie eight? Do we protect e two first? Do we go rookie one? No, that's sad. No, rookie and one. we cannot play e three because it closes the control over the g five knight. So shall we go king f one? <laughs> oh, hang on. Yeah. I was just thinking, can I can we play e4 here? Um okay. It's a fancy move. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing after? I just want to show the idea, yeah. Let's say you, yeah. you take everything. Then I'll take this, and then you take this, and oh, I'll take okay. this, this, and then I'll go here. And then the queen has no way of protecting um e8 rook. So this is my main idea. And then if you mm -hmm. take it with the knight, I think it's also almost the same story. And um, yeah, I'll just take it, take it, and take it. If you don't take my bishop, then mm -hmm. I think the position is better for white because sooner or later, oh, yeah. this one will be weak anyway. And then yeah, the rook B7 has to go. Yeah, the rook has to go and I can choose, oh, maybe rook e1 now. Yeah, just, just like that. And if you push the pawn to d4, then I can push f4 and then e5. f4 looks really nice. Yeah. Mm. So this might be missed actually by the player. By I mean by black especially because now um Gretchen is still thinking because uh I mean this is this is pretty I think it's a candidate move to make. I like this e4. Yeah, it's a very brave brave move to go for indeed. And if you play h6, <laughs> let me think. First of all, you have this. You cannot take this, yeah? Because, okay, can you? I don't know. Can oh, you you, me? I mean, you can, but I think like this. And then you have to go queen f5 and then takes yeah. this, takes this. And then I think this one is lost anyway uh, at some point. I can play like this maybe. Mm -hmm. And you have to attack this rook and then I'll just mm -hmm. go here. I mean, this requires some calculation, of course, but uh, eventually... In the end game, uh, white stands better again. So, yeah, I like I like the the potential of this e4 move. Is there anything else that we miss in this calculation? I just want to say that e4 is such a thematic idea in these like hanging pawn positions. Mm -hmm. Remember some like Fisher Spassky game that Fisher won a, a positional masterpiece. And as you were showing the opening earlier in this game, I had found uh, a game between Magnus and Ding Loren from mm. a few years ago that featured the, like, the same middle game structure coming from the same opening. And I believe it was Magnus who also played this E4 move relatively early in the, in the middle game to try and um, destabilize these so-called hanging pawns for black. So it's always a move that you want to be considering. And sometimes for newer players who aren't used to these structures, E4 is not the first move that comes to mind, but definitely a candidate move. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like this. I like this. And, and I can I can feel it that uh, Gorechikina is uh, considering about it because um, otherwise a move like, for example, 
Bishop, no, I don't even want to mention this move, like Bishop F1. Uh, that's that's totally not the spirit of the game. And yeah, we will see. It's going to be an interesting, another interesting game, actually, because um, we see so many up and coming position with some tactical on the board, like the game between Hikar mm. versus Ian. Also a very interesting rook lift by Ali Reza with rook h3. And then interesting preparation by Fabi and Parknanande as well in the French defense. And guys, um, I'm sorry to say, but we are due for our first break. So <laughs> yes, we don't have any ads, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> so it's not going to be blasting over the viewers ears but yeah we will be back laura eric and i we will be back soon after our first break so don't go don't go anywhere guys stay tuned on our lichas uh, commentary on twitch and youtube so see you in a few minutes
Hello, welcome back guys. And we are currently watching the round number seven. One more round before uh, the rest day tomorrow. So we've been talking and, and analyzing about the game uh, between Alexandra versus Dan Zongi. And we have some development there, which is a bit disappointing to me because I was ready, you know, to, mm. to be surprised by E4. Let's switch to the analysis board. So in this position, I was mentioning about um, playing e4, which didn't, yeah, which didn't happen on the game between Gochikina versus Tanzongi. Uh, I think it was such a nice idea. Yeah, uh, I don't know why Gochikina refuted this idea because um, I'd like to toggle the eval bar actually, if I mm. may. And turns out, oh, yeah, there wow. you go. Yeah, go me. Oh, so nice to have my move. Uh, to be approved by the engine, but instead, I, yeah, yes, sorry, yeah. I just want to say people in chat have been saying, have been complimenting your your ideas oh, and your thank moves. You. Like everybody's been saying, why are you not the GM yet? So honestly, <laughs> yeah, you're doing so great. You're doing so great. I'm so proud. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think Ifo would have, you know, taken the advantage for for white in this position, regardless of what variation that black uh, will follow after that. But instead, Gochkina chose a several line that we over, we we also discussed that um, she chose to play bishop takes d5 and now the eval bar back to equal. Uh, we don't need this eval bar anymore. I think we it's it's pretty smooth till the end later. So after bishop d5, yeah, you just simply have to exchange mm -hmm. everything. Uh, queen d5, queen d5, knight d5, rook d5, and this little move h6 before you take on e2. Yeah. So we saw the position up to knight here, and then takes this, and then if this happens, and then knight will go here, takes this, takes this, and then maybe just check here. So this is this is going to be my prediction of what's gonna happen in this game. Like takes this and then takes mm. this, and then yeah, they will have GGs. Yeah, they will have a quicker game compared to the rest of other the rest of the games today. Eric, what do you think? I think this game is going to be the the quickest game to finish out of all the games today. <laughs> Even though we haven't seen some of the other games in the mm -hmm. women's, uh, it looks like the other ones are harder fought. Looks like there's more life to them, so perhaps we can move on. Yeah. So, which but, one yeah. would you like to look at, Laura? Um, from the women's section, I'm not sure. Okay, actually, I, I wanted to see opening between Selimova and Lahno mm -hmm. uh, because there was some interesting Rui Lopez mm -hmm. with Nigi 7 and, okay, exchanged queens now, but before it looked very, very interesting. Yeah. Well, I am proud to say again, <laughs> I was recommending this to another student of mine. <laughs> No, I'm so happy that all my prep. This, this, this is an unusual third move by Black. But uh, when I check this line, because because I have a young student, and then if I recommending them uh, about A6, it's gonna be too huge. Rulopez mm. is one of the biggest openings in chess. So net, and I saw this alternative with net GE7, and surprisingly, tons of good players playing this position, including Magnus Carlsen. Uh, him, himself so I was like even though it was like a bullet blitz rapid uh, games but if they keep playing this regularly then it might be meaning something so I analyzed this and of course the preparation is for like 2000 and below but still this is this is a um, this is this has like a very straight approach you just want to have the knight on g6 and then um, develop normally so let's see how the game went uh, castle, knight g6, d4, yeah, you just take stakes and bishop c5. So this is the main idea in this position. Um, normally you would have this position with the knight being on f6, but this time you have the knight on, on g6, which offers you an extra tempo to start preparing for d6 and f5 at some point, because mm -hmm. then you don't have to move your knight anymore. Um, here goes bishop e3, and then you take everything on d4, queen yeah, f I have to update my file I've, because I've never seen this position before. I think in my file it was castle, but 
Venero, uh, sorry, Salimova played queen g5. And e5 mm -hmm. was there, I think, preparing for f4. And now knight f4, hitting on g2 is one threat, one one checkmating <laughs> move coming up. So Lahno played uh, g3 and then a6, bishop c4, b5, and queen takes f4. And then we are seeing the end game like this. And after knight d2 castle and knight takes c4. And... What do you think? How does the, how does the position look like? White is up a pawn right now. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm right. trying to. Yeah, go go ahead, no, Laura. No, <laughs> no. Go, go, go. <laughs> go ahead, Laura. No, yeah, and and I've explained by Slimova immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Black will have a bishop against this knight, but also there's double pawn on the f file. I I don't know how to feel about it. I feel like Slimova is fine. Um, I don't know how she's fine because she's a pawn down, <laughs> but I just kind of believe her, you know, that that she will somehow get active and activity in the end game is absolutely very important. So, yeah, it, go ahead, Eric, now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was just wondering, like, where Black's compensation is for the pawn. Mm -hmm. But I, I do like this move F6, trying to get rid of this pawn on E5 and open that file for the rook. It seems like Black's main objective is to open the position quickly, get the rooks and bishop into play. But I imagine, like, if anyone's pushing for an edge here, it's probably white, just because like everything seems to be well defended. Also, seems like white can just leave the pawn on e five. If Black takes it, you just recapture with the f pawn, mm -hmm. and like maybe just a simple move, rook a d one or rook f e one, to start here, and. Yeah, see if Black can actually find enough compensation. Yeah, um, I think at some point this pawn will be moved anyway. You want to put the bishop on a6. So yeah, Salimova is down a pawn, but I think there is some compensation to it. It's not that easy to win this position, especially, well, Black will not take this without anything. Yeah, and then just keep the position like that. So We'll keep an eye on this because mm -hmm. um, it's going to be quite an instructive end game to play, especially uh, also to show like how are you going to defend this position with one uh, less pawn, with pawn, with one pawn less. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, why don't we come back to the game between Hikaru versus Ian Nefomnachi? Because this has turned into quite a nice position to analyze. So we saw the position after queen f1 and we totally forgot that the knight on b8 is not going into play at the moment. So that's exactly what Ian did in the game. He brought his knight to d7, trying to join the party around there, around this area. Uh, this is such a nice spot to have your pieces all together. And here uh, Hikaru played knight e f3, trying to develop the pieces little by little as well and after knight f6 offering a trade on knight g1 and what are we thinking in this position eric yeah i think it's important to note that hikaru took his first long think of the game before playing this move knight e f3 he took about 20 minutes if i'm not mistaken mm. so i think it's clear that maybe mm -hmm. He's on his own after knight d7. Maybe he had other more concrete moves in mind. But I do like this approach from Nepo, just gradually optimizing the minor pieces. And it seems like all of Black's minor pieces are well placed in this position. But with this last move, knight g1, the ball is in Nepo's court. And it seems like Hikaru just wants to trade knights, maybe bring the other knight to f3, develop the bishop and keep the material advantage. So it's a question, can Black keep the pressure here and avoid too much liquidation? Yeah, uh, maybe one one liquidation is, is meant to happen anyway. I think one of the knights has to be traded. I was just thinking, what if I met this knight g1 with knight g4? Yeah, um, I was thinking exactly the same. Yeah, this looks very nice. Yeah, oh. but unfortunately, there is a double fork. Like after this, I can just play this. <laughs> And That's after this, yeah. there is this knight g5. Yeah. And this type of liquidation is actually what Hikaru has in mind, right? Because you want to trade as many pieces as you can, because uh, I think the end game would be nicer for white having an exchange up and 
It's not actually an exchange job. It might be a rook up now. <laughs> because after yeah, you take this, I take your your bishop over here. So a move like an innocent, not innocent. <laughs> this is like a bluffing move, knight g4. You want to attack on e3. It looks like, ooh, so nice. But don't stop your, your calculation there. Because this if this happens, check. And after this, I think you're ought to take on yeah. h3, which is quite nice too, to be honest. Well, uh, I think I like this position by black because you have suddenly you have all your pieces around the area. So maybe this is what Ian is thinking because now the knight can jump to c2, taking on here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering about this position. Like, is, does white have queen d3? Yeah, I can move my bishop and back. Bishop f5, and then I'm wondering about knight f3. Knight f3. Trying to ah. set up the same fork idea. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Look at this position. Also hitting the knight on e3. Mm, tactics, tactics. Working well here for both sides. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, but with knight g1, white is not really threatening anything yet. You mm -hmm. know, is is knight from d2 to f3 really an idea for white in the original position? Because the knight e4, knight e4 or bishop e4 can come in the future. So maybe we just don't need to play anything like what's the threat is it what does white want to do with this knight g1 right is it Queen by the G2? way yeah? i think nepo has been overhearing all of these these variations <laughs> we've been analyzing with all these fork ideas yeah. Yeah. he actually played the move king g8 yeah, yeah. So he's just terrified of the forks but maybe a useful prophylactic move yeah i yeah. think so yeah yeah because I, in many lines that white has uh white always has this idea with knight g5 check uh the fork so and then as as Laura mentioned as well that white is not threatening anything. This one cannot be taken yet because after this only black is winning here. So King G8, a nice prophylactic move by Ian. Yeah, stepping away from any possible of checks on G5 and also maintaining the control. Um, although the eval bar doesn't like it. So yeah, according to the eval bar, yeah, that. King G8 is not the most precise move, uh, because before we had this, after Knight G1, it was just like zero zero zero. I can switch to the multi board view, by the way, and then just to uh, hang on. There you go, just to show us that in this position, yeah, the eval bar was uh oh back to normal again. Wait, what's going on? What? <laughs> No, it's this. Oh, what? Hang on. Wait, oh, it's... isn't. Okay, we have the king on g8 right now. And then the default bar is not liking uh, Nepo's position. So I'm wondering, like, instead of king g8, if, if black can have a better idea. I mean, the intention is nice to stepping away from knight g5, but is there anything better than king g8, maybe? Probably like, but, but what? <laughs> I mean, yeah. What's what's the idea with black? Do we want knight on e four anyway, or do we just want to play knight g five? Maybe that's what I was also thinking. Like this um, one. yeah, 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 yeah. Or yeah, like knight g five immediately. Because King G eight, yeah, it's it's slow, and we are an exchange down. That's that's just what I was thinking. So, it takes and then take. Oh, I can take with the bishop. Yeah, yeah. you can take and with now the bishop. And now F three, and then I could play something like G five if I wanted to be fancy. Ah, this King on G two is weird. No. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, maybe maybe you're right, Laura. Maybe knight e4. Let's let's check actually. I'm no, gonna... no, no, no. <laughs> I don't want to see it. Okay, knight okay. e4 still gives a little edge to white's position, but okay, I think it's a it's a it's a good improvement because in this position, white is standing <laughs> a little bit better, but yeah. after knight e4, it it kind of like uh, lessening it a bit. So maybe knight e4 was uh, the move, but yeah. When you are exchanged down like this, you wouldn't like to trade too many pieces. Yeah, I think that's that's, mm, that's kind yeah. of like counter intuitive. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Eric, what's your take on this position? Now the position looks like Hikaru is 
back to the driver's seat and after king g8 queen e2 oh look at the e fall bar i know it's an <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't look at it too much because the position offers lots of complications yeah. but eric tell me what you're thinking yeah, I mean, as we see, just based on toggling the eval bar for a few moves, I think it's the type of position that is very, very difficult for humans to play precisely, mm -hmm. even the top humans in the world. And we're probably not going to see perfect chess, but it should be a very entertaining battle that lies ahead. And uh, yeah, it looks like a few moves unfolding here with Queen E2 and mm -hmm. 94. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I mean... Maybe objectively, Hikaru is better according to the engine, but I, I mean, I, I think the the result of this game could be a win for either side or a draw. Like it's a three result game essentially. Yes, it's so easy to blunder in this kind of position because black. Has I, I think it's very easy for yeah. either player to blunder here. Yeah, yeah just yeah, with yeah. so much tension, with the material imbalance, with box attack, so. Wait, Eric. Which side would you choose if you if you would choose one? That's a great right. question. I mean, in in a blitz game, no question, I would choose black. Mm -hmm. But in a classical game, I actually sometimes like to be the defending side. If if I'm the one up material mm -hmm. and I have a lot of time to think, then I enjoy just trying to play prophylactically and and hold on to the end game or hold on until the end game. So. Yeah, maybe I would choose white in a classical game, but black in a blitz game. Hmm. Okay, okay. Irene, I think we are choosing black now. Yeah, we're choosing black <laughs> all the way. Let it be classical, rapid, or blitz. Yeah, let's let's stack black in this position. But I think it is helpful to know the evaluation of this position via the evil yeah. bar. I think because 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 of that reason, maybe Eric was like, oh, maybe I'm I'm gonna play white. But if there is no evil bar and, and telling you that this position is slightly better, like very very slightly better for uh, white, it's going to be very dangerous to play uh, as white. So I would I would choose black all the way. Oh, this this yeah, I like this ninety four. We don't want to exchange the queens. There's. This is not even an option. So immediately we saw 94. And okay, 40 minutes only for Naponyashi. And they're Ooh. okay, they have 15 moves yeah. to make. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's true. And yeah, that's that's not a lot of time because they don't have 30 second increment. Let's figure out what to do in this position. So let's say I'm not gonna take this knight. I mean, mm -hmm. it looks like I have to yeah. protect my king by playing this one. And so, yeah, we want to develop this bishop already. Uh, we need we need the rook from a one to go somewhere into the gate. Yeah. So but can, what's can, next? Yeah. Then? Yeah. Well, I want to go g five somehow. G five. But... Nice. <laughs> no, is it? This is a very nice move. It's uh, yeah. Why not? Right. Just asking some questions, but is that? I don't know if it's a good move because even if I go g4, there's this knight h4, and I do not want to give up my f5 bishop because this bishop needs to be kind of an e4. I don't want this position without the bishop, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Makes so sense. now if white just plays bishop e3, uh, I don't know what's the continuation for black. So Bishop maybe e3. not, yeah, yeah, because now we want rook f1 or rook e1, and I feel like white has done it, <laughs> kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So g5 is maybe way too aggressive, and we need to maneuver the pieces, maneuver the pieces. Can we, could have, we, oh. We're going to say I play bishop here. Yeah. But we could have also played it without g5. Yeah. That was what I was uh -huh. thinking. Mm. So, okay, queen, okay, knight e4, let's say here, and yeah. then bishop g4 right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened after knight h3, bishop h3, king, king g1. here, maybe? Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, I cannot go to h1, yeah? Because yeah, I know my queen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. I mean, is that what we want to achieve with black? I don't know. 
Mm. Oh, maybe this one. Nah, but but you can just simply take <laughs> a fancy it. move. Too fancy <laughs> sometimes. yeah, there's King F2, though. Yeah, there's King F2. That's um, unfortunately there's King F2. But interesting, yeah. Is there anything else? What would be your candidate move, Eric? Mm. Yeah, I was like, I was thinking that the bishop really wants to be on e4, not the knight. But given that Nepo had just moved his knight to e4, maybe he's he's going for something else in in this sort of position. I mean, g5 also came to mind as just a way to grab space. Uh, but I mean, it seems like white is just a couple more moves away from stabilizing, like bishop e3 and rook e1 are, are both coming. So, yeah, I'm I'm really not sure. Uh, like, I'm, I'm still kind of scanning the position, looking for other ideas. Yeah, uh, this is a very concrete position. And Jan, I'm sure he, like, I'm sure this is his type of position to play as well, as he's dynamic player. I just don't know how... I don't like the bishop on c7. Like, what is it doing, you know? <laughs> but can it really improve? <laughs> yeah Not really, right? the Or... thing is i'm I'm trying to make this type of sacrifice work with g3 but i couldn't i couldn't find a way how to uh what if i just take because i think Mm -hmm. at some point this will be traded anyway and then you Mm take -hmm. with the king maybe and And now what? Yeah, now now how? bishop g4 you can play bishop e3 queen here Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, Rook you got, f1. you got everything, yeah, and then, Yeah, 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 you got everything exactly. just in time. Just to show in, the, in that line after rook f1, there was bishop h3. This one? And there might be some weird repetition. Yeah, in this line. Like bishop g4, bishop Ah, e3, okay. black try and exploit uh, the pin against the knight, and then bishop h3. And maybe this is a potential repetition where rook e1 and bishop g4, And then rook after and bishop this, can move back and forth. you have this, maybe. Ah, I didn't see king g2. But yeah, maybe queen f5. Hmm. Yeah. And white still seems a little bit stuck. Uh, black has good control over the light squares. Yep, so we're still on this position, knight e4. I was just thinking what else... to play apart from knight df3 because that looks very very natural you just want to develop your bishop followed by your rook Yeah, it's I mean interesting that Hikaru is taking his time here because if if he's taking his time, he's probably considering something else other than knight df3. um, maybe he wants to take immediately on h3 and just put the king on g1 Mm -hmm. Ah, and keep the tension between the knights. maybe yeah just trying to exchange them at some point and play with an exchange up. So if that works, this is something he could be considering, yeah. What do we do again? What do we do? How is this position equal? Um, <laughs> I don't understand. Good question. Right. Uh, Yeah, this equal evaluation, like according to the engine, it can be very misleading because even in very, very sharp positions, it can just spit out zeros or plus point two. But in reality, it, it can be just a complete mess where maybe both sides have to walk a very thin line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why Hikaru might just be considering all these, all these Oh, ideas. there is one one good move by the chat here that if we play something like this, there might be this following this one. Oh, that looks Mm. very nice. But Bishop P3, what's the idea? So Knight after G4. this, you have to take, right? Well, with the knight. Yeah, with the knight. And then after this, this, maybe some sacrifice on Bishop this one. G3. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But can, can, hang on, take stakes here. Where is the mate? Uh, <laughs> King is very slippery. 
Oh, but the knight hangs. Oh, but the knight hangs. Yeah. No. Okay. This is this. Oh, but bishop. But then the other knight hangs. Um. Where's the? Um, wait. This is very far off from the current position, but I think we found <laughs> a line where Hikaru is up a rook and surviving. <laughs> and thriving, not surviving yet. That's true, um, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I don't see the mate. Maybe, maybe no, after H takes uh, G3, we just go Queen H1 immediately. We don't have to take on G3, right? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's yeah, true. and this is the mate. <laughs> okay, we found yes, it. Yes, I think we found it. Yeah, so you got to be careful then. After, yeah, uh, knight h f two might be quite deadly. Um, and we cannot push this pawn because this is hanging just to give space for the king. What yeah, else? Yes, that's a very good suggestion by by somebody in chat. I like this idea. But the thing is, after let's say after bishop here. Mm -hmm. you and then this position happens then after mm -hmm. this you you're not forced to take on g3 and this okay, one is but... is um protected too no it's not because then i'm taking and going queen g queen g3 yeah right isn't that my threat oh no it's is it no yeah no <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, because let's say white just goes a3. We go bishop h2, knight h2, queen g3, king f1, queen h2, bishop f2, uh, king f1, yeah, takes bishop f2, queen h1, bishop g1, knight g3. Mm, nice. <laughs> yeah. So I guess this is a threat. So, uh, of course, black, white will never go a3, but <laughs> just, just, just calculating. I like no. I think this is a very nice idea. For some reason, and this all stems from knight h f two. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Which is not not a a natural move to play, but mm -hmm. seems very concrete. Okay. Uh, what if I play something else? Yeah, I want to play this one. But maybe you have this. And yeah, this. and I, I can take on e3 even yeah, if I yeah, want. Yeah, and now you take on e3. Yeah, this looks dangerous, yeah. Yeah. So, where was it hmm. again? That's why Hikaru is thinking to yeah. take immediately. So this natural so net the f3 is not really... Maybe not the best move in this position. And probably probably Laura is right. You can just take on this, takes this, and then just play King G1, and then um you're threatening to take on E4 the next move. Hmm, so we go bishop g4, I guess? Or Yeah, the thing is there is bishop g4, yeah. I think. Okay, but but can Y just move the queen somewhere? Or to move it? E three. E three. Oh, at the very least, there is this one, yeah? I always want to have this. Oh, no, 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 okay. no. There is no check. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The check oh, yeah. here, you can just take it with the queen. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. For some reason, my keyboard is not working, so I have to make everything with my mouse. Oh. Um. So king g1. Yeah, bishop g4 is nice, but after queen e3... Again, this bishop on c7 is kind of out of play. So so maybe you just have to play this position then, like um, letting the knight to be taken so that you can have a passer on the e4. Because it would be okay. it would be nice for for black to have this position. Put the bishop here, maybe, and then yeah, just just enjoy the position, perhaps. Because the king will never be safe, so all the white pieces have always to be around the king. Hmm, I feel like white can just go bishop d2, and after bishop f2, rook f1, and I can sacrifice the rook anytime I want, no? Because I will be some pawns up. I 
I, I would not feel comfortable with black at this point, I think. Yeah, what do yeah you think I agree. I, I think white white would be doing fine here. Always has a bailout and Rogue three on tap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this pawn is going to be weak anyway. Right. Okay, so... Fun, fun things. Yeah, 94. I don't know. And Hika it's up to Hikara now to calculate everything. Mm -hmm. And not up to us, which is the beauty <laughs> of a commentator job. <laughs> so while we're waiting for Hikara to make a decision, why don't we switch to our boy here, Ali Rezo versus Gukash. So yeah, London boy. Yeah, so uh, everything we talk about pretty much happened is uh, the rook cliff, the artificial castle, and Bl Black was not afraid. Black just shot castle himself. So we saw the position up to uh, rook h3, pretty much. And after bishop e7, h5, h6, a4, takes, takes, castle, and king g1. Mm. Nice, queen c6, and now Laura's move, knight e5, takes and yes. take with the pawn. And now you have clear path to attack, yeah? You put the queen on g4, you put maybe the rook on g3, mm -hmm. at least those two moves. Yeah, I guess what's going to happen now, if knight we go e4. just knight this. 94, ah, 94, I guess, 94. I don't know, Do you, would you feel comfortable with black in... When somebody's just going all in for it, like rook g3, queen g4, bishop h6. Yeah. It's... Well, not comfortable, of course. But the thing is, usually when you're attacking black like that, um, there are no minor pieces being traded off already. And in this position, there are already two minor pieces getting exchanged. And this, this means that the attack that white potentially has is not going to be as imminent as... It yeah. used to when we are seeing this position on the board. So probably I would just say knight e4, just offering as many exchange as possibly can. Uh, and after you have this, you yeah, step away with the king. I don't know, maybe h8 and then mm. put rook here. Um, yeah, you have this sacrifice at some point too. But again, there are a few pieces already traded off. So it's going to be... And, and actually in this position after net e4, you cannot play this one immediately yet because there is this one. Mm, yeah. No, I think oh. after knight e4, I, I want to take... on h6 first, yeah? Yeah, that also yeah, works. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, uh, so, king so, so king h8 is very, very much correct. But I think I, at some point I want to take on e4 just because then I think I can be a pawn up in many variations. I can go rook e3, uh, not immediately, like queen e2, rook e3, let's say. Um, I was I'm wondering just, about that too. Yeah. Okay, ah, if four, I have to protect mm -hmm. it first. Though. I think it yeah, would be sense. a very different story if this pawn was on yeah. E2 anyway. But now it gives some counter chance for black yeah. like in the position. So I would say... But I think, can white leave mm -hmm. the queen on D1? By playing? So knight takes E4 immediately. Okay. And, and then rook E3. Idea queen C2. Bishop C5. Rook E2. Idea queen E1. C2. Queen C2. And I can mm -hmm. put my... Okay, which rook? Maybe this one. Like this. Yeah, I guess black this. gets some counterplay. Rook BE1? Yeah. Um, I guess it's something that I have to go approach. F5 or something. Can I go F5 and, F5. and wow. pretend that I'm doing fine? You have to and pass on, yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> white is not having a good time. So it yeah. takes, takes. I want to take advantage of F2 yeah. somehow, but I don't know if it works after rook e4, actually. Because I don't know what to like do with white's my in time. Three. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have anything. That's not cool. That's not and good. This yeah. might explain why Gukesh did not play knight e4. He actually <laughs> played knight e7. Ah, yeah. Keeping the pawn structure as safe as possible. Yeah, a okay. little bit more passive, but very often the knight goes to e7, then reroutes mm. to c5, yeah. or sometimes goes to f8 to defend the king side. 
very natural move i feel like to to be played and yeah where's the attack where's the attack there's just not gonna be any well i'm curious about like okay queen rook g4. g3 or queen g4 i queen it seems g3, like both maybe, moves yeah. can come back to back mm -hmm. and how is black defending G3. after queen g4 rook g8 rook g8 Maybe maybe the question is how is white attacking after rook g8? Can you give up this pawn maybe? I mean this As, is I was looking how to get the knight in. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of knight f3, but then what do you think after queen a4? Uh, my, that's just what I was asking. Like, should we just give that pawn up without worrying about it and and then just continue attacking. Yeah, but the, I guess the question is like, where? What do we want to do with this knight? Because <clears throat> from f three, okay, we we can go to d four, but it's actually very hard for white to generate like clear threats with black's current setup. Yeah, that's exactly my thoughts as well. Can we somehow? Threaten bishop h6, but of course not in this position with knight f3. This is we're just too cramped, you know, on the king side. I just oh, you can start somehow... with the knight first, so that the queen can still yeah. hold the pawn. Let's put the knight on d4, let's mm -hmm. say, or something, or or I don't know. Oh, but here yeah. I can play knight d5 maybe. Hmm. And I'm attacking mm. this and also knight e4. No, <laughs> I just want to put my knight on e4. Yeah, like I can go knight d4, queen a4, queen c1. I know you just go with with knight e4 in the worst case. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and here and... I always have to g8 all the time. Yeah, the the attack I think will. Well. There's yeah. also queen d2. Oh no, queen d2, knight e4. Yeah, I just want to somehow grab this pawn with having the queen like that. Was there a, if we go back before knight d4, could white play queen c1? Sorry. Um, this one, yeah. And then what do you say? Knight f3? So after knight f3, knight c5, uh -huh. queen c1, you completely abandon uh, the but then a have this, pawn. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, queen d2, let's say. Then I'll take Ah, but then knight e4. Hmm? I was thinking um, queen d2 immediately, but that also doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this knight is tricky being on c5. Right. So, yeah, this cannot happen. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's why sometimes pushing h5, as Aliriza did, is not an incredible approach because then you want, if you have pawn on h4 instead, you can go g4, g5 in some variations. And okay. Yeah. This, but this, this. it might offer something. Hey, hang on. Yeah. Um. No, there's Bishop G five. Oh, I I really want to sacrifice on H six, but it's it's never. So work. yeah. I I have a I have an idea though. So if we just go into the line we were just looking at, Knight F three, Knight C five. Do we have Bishop takes H six here? Yeah, I I was Ooh. thinking about that. And, and then Queen D two. Queen D two. King H seven. Uh, and then the idea would be to draw with so queen yeah, c2. This, this oh, okay. There's 94, so. 94 that's, is a problem. Yeah. That's, that's a problem. Yeah, you would never be work. able to mm -hmm. get repetition out of this. Mm. I mean, maybe there's knight d4 there in f3. I was thinking but looks maybe very it, shaky. Is, it is time to actually look at this variation with b4 to stop everything while yeah. the rook is, mm -hmm. you know, the rook is protecting c3. And then you don't have to worry about knight c3 anymore. And then next move, you can play rook g3 as you want. And after a5, what are we doing? a5, okay. I'll throw in this one first, maybe. And then after king here. Yeah. Um, so if I play b5, what do you play? You have hmm. to move the queen. Oh, yeah. I do have to move the queen. <laughs> And we can use this tempo. In fact, the, yeah. the knight can also go to b3 via, via b3 to d4. Or we can also stay in here and then put the queen on here maybe, maybe and then hitting h6. 
maybe so maybe maybe it looks i mean a bit the, mm -hmm. yeah no the problem is we're letting the knights on c5 and e4 but it's I, I guess it's not such a big deal um if we have this activity with b5 and space advantage yeah 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 well you can play queen here which um maybe it is yeah. time for me to play queen e2 protecting this maybe it doesn't need protection but anyway my idea would be like this and then this something like this and you might have to resort to this one so i was actually thinking after we play rook g3 can we okay king h7 is it a move maybe you can just give a check yeah yeah we give oh, a no, check no. king h7 sorry i yeah. mean here after b4 ah and then rook g3 and king h7 yeah i mean we can I guess it's fine because we're we're going b5 and knight b3 anyway and queen d2 so or queen c1 so it's not we're not losing anything with a check we mm -hmm. don't need to do it but we can <laughs> I would I would like to express um, concern about Aliriza's time though Ooh, because they happened? need 20, 24 uh, moves to play and he's on 31 minutes already yeah 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 wow so um so he kind of like stuck then you know in this position mm. because yeah he's just trying to how to proceed in this position yeah time. how to keep yeah. attacking or something like that yeah he's just not feeling good in this tournament i can feel that yeah it's uh, he's he's playing really slowly at this point which is not good for his confidence as well like he will have to start playing fast at some point yeah so what do you think guys should we see other games too yes probably Which update one? ourselves on fabiana versus magnananda mm. because um, yeah there's been a lot of moves since we last left in that <laughs> game so we see the some, position some after bishop d2 and he took yeah knight, knight takes d2 knight takes d2 bishop h6 and bishop b5 knight has to go to c6 to stop uh, this attack at knight f3 back castle castle queen e7 then bishop a6 so yeah all the attention has been diverted to the queen side after rook c7 rook fd1 knight b8 bishop d3 a5 takes takes and queen e1 so i think the position is quite pleasant for for white in this position eh? Like the bishop, we're just thinking about this bishop, which stands a little bit better than bishop on h6. And what else can we see from this position? Yeah, it's um, kind of a difficult position to judge with yeah. opposite color bishops. I mean, maybe I'd lean towards it just being a bit draws, but I like the fact, like from Black's perspective, the bishop's always controlling c1 which gives black pretty good control over the c file. Mm. Yeah, I I don't know what's going with going on with the a5 pawn now with this queen e1 move. I like it because if we have to do we have to go knight c6, I guess so. But then white is coming on b file, so we're taking control. So what move do you suggest, Laura? No, I, I want to say knight c6 to protect a, protect a5, yeah. Um, and if I go db1, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then go for this one or this yeah. one. Yeah, like b6 very much or, or something. I don't know, yeah, it's it doesn't look comfortable for black, but somehow, yes, it's very equal-ish. I mean, and, and knight c6 is on the board, by yeah. the way. I mean, it, we didn't have a lot of options, I feel like. Uh... Can we play bishop b5 here? Like simply threatening to take the knight and take mm -hmm. on a5? Mm -hmm. That's that's a good suggestion, yeah. Bishop b5. Let me play rook a8, let's say. This bishop on h6 is, h6 is strong, but also it's not doing much, so... <laughs> I, I wanted to take bishop c6 because I wanted to say, oh, knights are doing better here, but I, I just can't move the knight, so I would have to go back, I guess, queen queen e2, somehow knight e1, knight d3, yeah. Mm. 
that could be an idea to to go for yeah looks nice uh, so i don't yeah it it looks kind of equalish in general so prague did well with this french i think i think so too yeah yeah he he defends very well uh in this position yeah fabi has to play with an extra effort to in order to win this position but again tomorrow is the rest day so both players might think you know just to take it easy for the day and then a place to maintain uh well for fabi uh he hasn't suffered any loss yet in this in this candidates i think right i think he just had a few draws mm -hmm. and one win against abasov yeah he was on he was, edge of losing though against Vivek. he was close to losing he to was visit, close to losing to yeah but he right. he managed to maintain the streak not to lose uh any games so yeah let's keep an eye on this one we haven't actually looked at two of the women's games that um this one muzichuk versus conero just uh quickly oh we no we didn't see this so this is another rula pass a6, bishop a4, knight g e7. So the difference is with, with the game uh, between Katrina Lahno and Salimova. Salimova played knight g e7 right away without a6. Mm -hmm. So c3, knight g6. But um, the idea is not very similar because now d4 is hitting on c5. So the bishop uh, moves differently. Bishop to b4, bishop d2 takes takes and castle. Castle and d5. Oh, d5 and bishop takes c6. <laughs> we take c6 and e5. So, yeah, I think this position is, is pretty normal. Like, really, really normal. Uh, e5, knight e5, queen f6. Knight df3, knight e5, d5. Then queen g6, rook e3, bishop g4. h3. Yeah, here I... I uh, Connor had a long thought, I would say, and yeah, after like fifteen minutes, um, she decided to play d four. Rook d three, and then bishop takes f three, and trading like mm. this, and then queen c two. Wow! So it's almost. I mean, we are currently in the end game with two major pieces for each player, uh. But if you were having this game, Laura, would which side would you would you prefer to play? I, I I was just asking myself this question because if if it's black to move, I just go d3, mm -hmm. d2, rook d8, and I think actually this is just winning. Um, and right now queen c2 is such a strong move, so I have to stop it. I mean, which side would I choose? At first, I have to think what move can I even play with white. So I think after queen b3, mm -hmm. I don't feel like this is a good way to play this with white so i have to go rook d1 and after rook d8 um i have to again e6, like ask maybe. myself maybe e6 yeah maybe e6 or e6 immediately before rook d1 is also i guess an interesting idea i don't know i feel like this is equalish but it's hard to play for both sides depends on which how strong opponent you play that's how comfortable you feel, yeah. If you play weaker opponent, it's, yeah. it's always easier. If you play a stronger opponent, I would be scared with both colors. Um, yeah, and you? What about you, Eric? Yeah, I was just thinking, um, like, white has a better structure with mm. uh, just uh, the king side pawns more intact. Black has a double C pawns. Even after queen C2, which does look nice and active, hitting B2, maybe supporting the D pawn, still looks like white has everything under control. Mm. Uh, I think my top choice would be rook D1, hit the D pawn, and then try and start advancing the E pawn. So the same yeah. approach like what Laura suggested then, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about this line with rook D and E6. Because I mean, e seven or queen f seven are on tap, and yeah, rook f eight. Uh, we don't quite have e seven, I guess. Not yeah, quite. because yeah. f two is is hanging. So after yeah. this, yeah. queen and rook, rook f eight check yeah. here. Yeah. If also, you white a lost like a this, pawn because he promoted. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. So. Um, 
can we can we go Ruka Fate immediately? Because this is of... Isik's idea. I completely underestimated. Yeah, so it's it might be very strong. I I guess maybe now Queen B three. Queen... Queen B2 yeah, or Queen, no, Queen B3. D3? Ah, no, we have to go B3. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, using F2 to go, if I go This is hanging, yeah? So we <laughs> yeah. have to take this, this, and then this one, and maybe this is time for play B4. Ah, okay, and we play this this one. Yeah, and I guess we take on B4, Rook D4. Oh, yeah, this, this. How, how do you evaluate this? C5? E5. You maybe get this one or get this from behind. Because if you do this, then I'll do this, yeah? Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. so after c5 you're rook d6. Yeah. yeah. It should be drawish. Should be drawish. Also Somehow, yeah. there is this one. Oh maybe not. E6 is there. Oh uh, okay. there is King of Eight, yeah. But at least now I It still seems one. like White has a slight pull in these end games. Mm. Yeah. So rook d1 then, I think it's a... it's a good move in this position but what happened if i just simply take on f uh, on b2 I guess so c6 six, is hanging six, yeah. yeah and then rook f8 ah you can give a check and then takes this and then protecting this mm. too. but okay i'll grab this one as well mm -hmm. so let's say like mm. this this and then takes this yeah, I think I this think game I'm... still has a lot of potential to be exciting in these sort of positions where it could be a pawn race and queen saw on the board. I'm still looking hmm. light in such a line. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I this e pawn can be so dangerous. I would not feel so so extremely comfortable with black here, actually. So yeah, when you asked before which side I'm choosing, I guess white is <laughs> is more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Queen C two is brave move, very brave move yeah, to Queen go. Yeah, um, But what's the time now? Okay, they they're kind of same. They have same time, so I guess computer says this is zero zero, but we don't listen to those here. <laughs> Right, what do you think? I mean, Eric? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I don't think the game is going to end anytime soon. I think it's going to be a long battle where Muzi Chuk, I mean, she is, what well, she's currently tied for last place in the, the standings. So we uh, hump, you I know? imagine she's hungry for, for a win or at least to grind down her opponent. What was that, Laura? Uh, aren't uh, she and Humpy tied for the last place? Yeah. 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 Both ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe both players want to try and draw blood too. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. it's a type of position. Like all three results could be possible, but I um I prefer to be white in this position. Oh, Ruth, you think so? Ah, uh, yeah, maybe. But yeah, I think it's still pretty much equal. And Muzijuk is um currently thinking right now. Both players have similar time situation. And I was just keeping an eye on the game between Hikaru and Ian after knight e4. There's still no move yet by Hikaru. I think this is this is a longer thing that that Hikaru is is doing right now. Um, we called perfectly on the game between Fabiano versus Pragnananda that after knight c6, yeah, rook db1 is just a very sensible move to make. You want to control the b-file, you want to also enter the position by playing rook b6 and potentially doubling up the rook uh, after maybe taking care of this pawn first. So yeah, the, I think the ball is in Fabiana's court, but um, with a good defense, black can equalize this game easily. And a surprising response by Ali Reza, we didn't think about this a5 move before. Um, because mm. that was the source of the problem in White's position that we were worried about should we give this pawn or not. But after knight d7, Ali Reza just played rook g7, uh, attacking h6. So Gukash King stepped away to h8, and Ali Reza followed it up with a5. So now the question is what happened after knight c5? Is it just before? I like before. And Very then much. after knight d4, maybe it takes takes and then put the bishop here and then here, maybe. Or yeah, you can and I'm also... having better structure. Or you can also try to attack like this, yeah, and then, I mean, start with this one, yeah. 
So looks very interesting response. Yeah, I like it. And also in these kind of lines, Black doesn't have these A5 ideas as we mm. saw before. So we don't even have to give the C5 square, yeah? Yep. We, we can just play B4, the next move, and knight B3, knight D4. What does Black do then is the question. So very, very nice move, but only 27 minutes to go, and they have 22 moves to make, yeah? It's move 18. Yeah. That's the concerning part. That's very concerning. Eric, what do you think about this A5 move? I'm just admiring the fact that Frugia has managed to play h4, h5, and a4, a5 <laughs> within the first 20 moves of the game. Uh, there, There is something called the crab opening, where you start with these pawn moves, and pawn moves are the crab because you're trying to pinch your opponent from both sides. But here, it's kind of a delayed crab, and we'll see if it pays off. But he is controlling space on both flanks. Um, but yeah, it seems like Gukash is just unfazed and keeping the time advantage. And if if I had to make a prediction, I think Black is going to be the one fighting for an edge going into the middle game. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay. Looking nice mm. for Alireza. But yeah, as Laura mentioned, he has to watch out his clock situation because he has to make 22 more moves with only 27 minutes and in open section they don't have the increment um until they reach move 40 pretty much 40 and start to move mm -hmm. 41 then they, they'll have their increment well so far so interesting guys but i think this is also our cue to take our next break it time flies so fast when we're just you know, analyzing all these <laughs> interesting games. But yes, chat, stay tuned with us um, on YouTube and Twitch, and we will be back after a few minutes. So see you soon.
and welcome back to the Lichia stream with Irene and Eric. We're having such great fun watching these games, especially I feel like um, Hikaru's and Jan's game today is on fire, but we cannot miss the other games as well. So shall we just get dive right in? Yep, let's do that. There you go. We have currently on the board the game between Hikaru versus Ian. And after such a long thing, actually, let me see how how long did Hikaru took to play A4? 40 minutes. It's never it's never a good sign when you spend 40 minutes for a move. So A4 is on the board. Eric, let's walk us through on this move. What do you think about Hikaru's A4? Yeah, this is not a move that was on our radar. <laughs> At first, this move looks totally random. Like, mm -hmm. all the focus <laughs> for the last several moves has been on the king side. But if we look at this a4 move a bit closer, we can see that it does prepare <gasps> rook a3. And just <gasps> as I say that, incredible move by Nepo. Bishop takes g3, sacrificing a bishop. What is the point? I don't know, but I love it. Okay, let's let's be <laughs> takes this one because you have to. I mean, it looks like the most uh, natural move to make to take it back. And then what's next? Is there any sort of a uh, perpetual? Like if you do this, check mm -hmm. and then queen here maybe. Because if I you, think we, if you go oh, here, yeah. you cannot do that because knight knight um, oh. g three is there. So if you play here, there is queen here. Followed by queen here. I'm afraid you might be right that this this might just be a a bailout yeah. sacrifice to for, force perpetual. I'm wondering though in this line after king g two, queen g three. It has to be like this. Oh, there is queen h two as well. No, because uh, if king g two is a oh yeah king g two actually. Oh sorry. Um, where where were we? Uh, queen g three, king h one, queen h four. Okay, if king g two, oh yeah, just just check here. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say I'm wondering about king f one. King f one. I mean, white's up a rook and a knight here, so if you can just somehow escape the checks. Mm -hmm. Everyone's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a very difficult position to to think about, and like Nepo just played immediately, right? Yeah. Bishop G three. So A four. So, let's see. Oh no. Um, eight minutes. Eight minutes. He took his okay. time. Okay. 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 So let's okay. see it again here. Check here. You have to take, and then Queen check. Yeah, you cannot move here because Knight G three. You cannot move here because it's. Queen G3. Queen G3 mate. again. It's a mm -hmm. mate. You cannot move H1, knight G3. So your only move is king. Only move. H2. So there's also queen H6 instead of queen G3. Mm -hmm. And H6. this this might just be a more clear draw yeah. because mm -hmm. as we see, the king is forced between H2 and G2. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. Yeah, so this is. Ooh, but this is what I meant. Um, like there are somehow, somehow they could find this type of repetition. Like we wouldn't expect that. Well, uh, potentially the game would end up with this repetition, right? But we wouldn't expect it would be happening like this, right? So mm -hmm. is there anything else after Bishop takes G3? If we don't take it, Knight F4 is coming. So I think you're kind of forced to take it. If you play something like this, let's say just to protect um, this square, you can safely move the bishop back and enjoy the pawn, right? Yeah, or just knight f4 anyway, and or just move the bishop. And I think this bishop before it was terrible on c7, and now it's gonna be great because yeah. this g3 pawn is gone. So uh, I think that might almost be winning for black even. Yeah, but um, Hikaru is taking his time. I think he needs to because. Uh, we can say that there might be just repetition and it's a draw and so on. But during the game, you never know. Maybe there is a sense of doubt of your own calculation, right? Or maybe I missed something that suddenly my opponent found a way to win or something like that. Although there's almost nothing after H takes G3. Um, oh, we have it. We have it on the board now. Aren't oh, we, we have it on the board. Yes, yes. And 
as we speak, yeah, this is happening. Yeah, this position. Ah, because I was saying oh, the excitement. Look oh, at this. What? After King F1 allowing <laughs> the G3. Wow. So Hikaru not going for the, the perpetual mm -hmm. line. Or maybe because it's wrong, maybe. Because I can sense something is, is wrong in that position. Like if you play King H2, it looks like you might yeah. walk into some sort of mate. We're missing Queen G3, King H1, Knight F2. That's what we're missing. Uh, yeah. Can you repeat? Queen G3, King H1, oh, Knight F2. F2. Oh, yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to take, and then this is um, a lesser preferred position if you want to trade the Queen with the Knight, yeah? Compared to what we have on the board right now, the Queen will be traded with the Knight, like what we had. What, like what we saw before, but this is yeah. a more preferred position because the king is at least safer. Now the question is where the king goes. E1, F2. I guess it's the same because mm -hmm. we're th okay. Actually, maybe it's not the same. Ah, he has not Looks played. like he played king, king E1. E1. Ah, okay. So yeah. takes and takes with the knight and playing this position. A queen versus three pieces. Well, it's oh. queen for two knights and a rook. Yeah, which is terrible if you count the material, yeah? Two knights and a rook, yeah. Three pieces, three pieces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's three That's pieces, true. but rook, <laughs> yeah. The rook is... And a rook is even coming out on 8-3. So this is now the question. Can white coordinate his pieces? Because if he does, he's winning. So black, again, has to be very concrete, no? Yeah. Uh, how... Yeah, how do we do we go something like queen h6 with id queen h1 or, or something similar? What shall we do? What shall we do with black? And only 26 minutes? Okay, they have only nine moves to make, so that ma makes it a bit easier for Jan. But... Yeah, that's true. Always, there's this rook c3 idea because, um, like, if it was a concrete stuff, like, for example, like this. And this takes, takes. I always want to get this bishop, but then there's always rook c3. Mm -hmm. So I cannot do that. So what else can we do? Like what uh, Laura mentioned, queen what? H5? H5, H6, I guess it's the same. Mm -hmm. Let's say we play same this, yeah? Thing. There's yeah. always net f1. That's the... Is it? Because then bishop h3, uh -huh, and then you have knight g3. Yeah, there's okay. always knight g3. The knight... Protects each other. Bishop g4. This is what Ian mm. did. Oh, actually, we saw this. Yeah. I mean, bishop d3 was there. So after rook here. So oh. it looks like he's threatening queen h6. Yeah, queen, queen e6. e6. Yeah. yeah, just simply. But knight here. Ah. Rook a3 played, by the way. So we will yeah, see yeah. what Ian is Because the king can always go to f2 in this position. And everything is protected. So rook a3 was already played. Yeah, so. Meeting queen e6 with knight f3. Hmm. Um, okay. Hmm. <laughs> this is tough again. Maybe the question is, if you were black in this position, would you trade your bishop or would you keep it on the board? Well, it depends. I think... Trading is very interesting because if I go bishop e2, king e2, king, queen g2, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you, if you potentially go king d1, I want to go queen g1 and take on d4. And if I take that one, I think I'm satisfied. Okay. I would guess so. I'm not sure because when there's so many imbalanced in the material, uh, the position is very hard to understand and computers are very good at understanding it but humans uh we have some flaws you know mm -hmm. queen is six yeah knight of three we saw so i was thinking like this this and queen here but there's less rook c3 yeah i feel like white's protecting everything so we need to Oops. be so yeah we're still on rook a3 What do you think, Eric? Well, how would you approach this? Would you take queen e2? Yeah, intuitively, I'd want to keep the mm -hmm. light toward bishop. I feel like the queen and bishop can work together, especially because of the opposite color bishop situation. It seems like positionally, it's better to keep the pressure. But bishop takes e2, is it's very concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, 
because okay, walks into this forcing line. King takes e two, queen g two, and yeah, Laura, I think you're right. If if black can win the pawn on d four, then it seems like black's going to have enough to to not be losing. Like c five and f four, even a four are all mm -hmm. potential targets. Yeah, and white's mm -hmm. pieces just don't are, are not mm -hmm. finding harmony anytime soon. Yeah, exactly. I like this idea actually. Yeah. Can but, white play differently then? So takes, Yeah, yeah. And we're going up with the king. Let's check. try that. So Let's maybe try... instead of king here, I'll go king here. And when you give a check, I'll Ooh. put my bishop uh, knight there. So after this, maybe I can play rook c3 and protect mm. everything. It's oh, it's eight. an incredible square for the queen on d4. It hits all four pawns at the same time. <laughs> yeah. It's like Every move white can play to try and defend a pawn loses another pawn. Like bishop e3 loses b2, rook c3 loses a4. But can we go up with a king? Can I go something like king? There's this one. Oh, king d3 maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe king d3. Because then king hides on c2. I'm taking on f4 though, so yeah. if I go queen g3... So again, but I think this is better for for white. Yeah, I can just put things like this maybe, or not F three immediately. I, I think so. I I agree. Yeah. So so if maybe this happens, just like this immediately. We need four chuck. And let's say I play king here. I mean, black, I want to start pushing my yeah. king side pawns. But I think white is just very safe. Rookie three is coming. I think hmm. you're right. Yeah, if, if white can stabilize like this and get the pieces into play. Oh, but bishop takes e2 was played. So maybe we'll see this play out. And Hikaru might not be on his chair because otherwise you would have taken mm -hmm. on e2 immediately. Oh, king e2 already on the board. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see what's going to happen. I mean, I don't think there's anything else but queen g2, right? Or you can also play queen g1 immediately. Oh. Now attacking but d4. Yeah, knight. there is knight here, but at least now the rook is out of play. And now maybe there is a perpetual with check here, because how are you going oh. to hide with the king? I can always go to the light squares. I like it. Oh, I, I very much like queen g1. That's a very nice spot. So after rook c3, I'm just taking on d4 again. Yeah, <clears throat> so after queen g1, what else? Like, if you play rook c3, then I can take this, yeah? Because I think this is a better pawn than f4. I mean, at least you have a, a passer on d5. That's yeah, what I thought. Yeah, um, yeah I like yeah, it. queen g1. And queen g1. Yay. Oh, so strong today. So well, strong, actually, yeah. I heard <laughs> so strong. You were, you were strong since the beginning of commentary. Uh, so, so, yeah, like, you're on fire. You're on fire. I feel like, you know... Candidates next year. Mm. <laughs> no, not too far. Uh, too far will. <laughs> First, I have to qualify to many, um, oh, yeah, via yeah. many platforms, yeah, Grand Swiss or being in the yeah, uh, yeah, World yeah. Cup or winning the Fido Circuit or oh, in women, it's Grand Prix. Yeah. Oh, but so many ways to qualify, you know. <laughs> You're gonna get a lot of chances. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. So, are we gonna see some perpetual then? Because if knight b3 happens, then this is just all the yeah. checks coming on the board. Yeah, let me just check here, and then I have high. Oh, maybe maybe I didn't go for the better square for the checks. I like in this position, no. maybe here. Oh, just to keep an eye on this square, so you cannot hide to b1 like this. Mm. And if, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. just like this, and then put like this again, and then all the way on the so net be free, net be free is on the board. So we're expecting queen g2 check, and yeah, they might go to move 40 actually. But in the end, since this rook is out of play, cannot really help uh, the, the defense of the king, then yeah, I think it's an easy perpetual for Ian, Eric. You have been quiet. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking for ways to escape the perpetual, but I don't see any. Like I, I would have liked to just hide the king on a two, but I don't think there's a way to get there. 
No, yeah, I feel like this game is going to end in a draw, even though if it will end in a draw, it was a very eventful Interesting game. draw, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, they definitely made it fun for us. I don't know if it was fun for them, <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun for us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Queen G2, uh, we might be expecting that very soon. Or what do you think? This is just some idea because knight f5 is also is an idea if the if the queen is not tying to the pawn. Like some move like this, f6 followed by g5, just trying to get a pass pawn on the g file. If Ian is thinking to, you know, a draw is there, I agree. But if Ian is thinking to push this position into something yeah. else, do you think I want to go? I want to go bishop d2 now. Bishop then, D2 or Bishop E3? You can have this, actually. Well, Bishop E3, I'm scared for my B2 pawn uh -huh, in general. Right. That's why I went to D2 just to be safe, mm -hmm. because I don't want to calculate. <laughs> so let me Even. play my idea, yeah? Just, just to yeah. see it on the board. Queen G2 is let's, already on the board, by the way, okay, but yeah, just okay. take a look Let, at this one. Just check that. Let's uh -huh. take take and something like Knight C1. I oh, know, Knight C1. Yeah, Knight C1 You can maybe, take this one, by the way. If you move the knight, then I'll take the default pawn. Yeah, maybe I take on a5 and I'm just fine, yeah. Like this, this. At the very least, you can just stop it like this. And then you can take this and then push this pawn, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds fun for white as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, but queen g2 is already on the board. King oh, d1. Yours. And so queen correct. f3, okay, so instead of queen h1, and, yeah, queen f3 also, as long as you're keeping, uh, you are keeping an eye on the queen e4 idea, which happened on the board after king c2, queen e4. Yeah, I think we'll see hand check soon. They have to repeat the moves though, before, or making it to the move 40. So I, I think my prediction was wrong. I was predicting <laughs> the game between uh, Tan and Garachkina to be the first game to finish <laughs> yep. today, but looks like Hikaru Neto is going to get there sooner. Yeah. Wow. The game between Garachkina versus Tan, we will see it later, but it doesn't look like it's um, it's going to what Garachkina hoping for. Or maybe it is still equal, but we'll see. We'll, we'll analyze that one. But mm -hmm. we have king c3 on the board, so queen f3, we can expect this one very soon. I don't know about queen e1. Queen f3 already happened. So you want to repeat actually king c2, because otherwise if king d2, then this might be some trick there with queen f4. And yeah, I think they're going to repeat. This mm -hmm. is already like second repetition, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. And we'll, yeah. See, um, we'll see the score soon. Uh, king c2 and after queen e4 that's it that's it this is going to be the last move i would <laughs> i would believe this is going to be the last move in this in this game yeah yeah <laughs> i think i think you're correct again wow oh yeah <laughs> yeah so wow so it means uh we have the first result in the open section and in the whole event uh, for this round on round number seven, um, a very, very interesting and fighting draw uh, between Hikaru versus Ian Nepomniachi. And let's take a look our friend here, Alireza versus Gukesh. I think <laughs> both two games, one is already ended, so we can uh, convert our, um, our intention, not intention, attention to other games that's also equally interesting. Um, Rook G3. King h8, and we saw this position after mm -hmm. a5, queen c7, knight f3, a sacrifice, oh. queen takes a5, We're... and now c4, attacking the center. Hmm. We, why didn't we go b4 instead of knight f3? Ah, e5 was hanging. Okay, okay. But was it, yeah, it was really hanging, yeah, because you can just play f6 if anything happens. Mm -hmm. So after, let's say, queen c7, uh, Let's say we play b4. Knight takes here. Mm -hmm. And how are you? Okay. Yeah, let's like say I this. play that. I play f6 maybe. Yeah, or there's also bishop d6. d6. Oh, there's also bishop d6, yeah. And then next move, you just move this knight. Mm, yeah, I guess 
Do you think Alir is a blunder or he had plans to play this C4 all along? What what do we do with this C4 in the in the position that we have? What are this we one, doing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the idea? Oh, this one is hanging. So what what do you mean? Sorry. Oh. Yeah, yeah, this one's hanging, but what if I just go rook d8, let's say, for oh, rook fun? Rook d8, yeah. uh, this rook? Okay. We'll check which one is better. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What's the idea? That's what I was thinking. Like, okay, I played c4, but... Yeah, the thing but, is, yeah. the thing is, Ali Reza always has this drawing idea um, in his pocket. I mean, before c4, mm -hmm. he can also employ this idea as well. Like after queen takes f5, he can play this, attacking this one, and then this mm -hmm. is the only move that you can have, you know, and mm -hmm. then here you can come back again. Um, the inclusion of c4, if he's still sticking to the to that idea after c4 and rook a d8, I don't see any change. You can come back to that one again because you have to somehow guard this pawn. If not, then this is just a loss. So maybe by c4 he just wants to check his opponent, like what is your reply? If he if he replies mm -hmm. something like maybe knight b6, <laughs> and maybe it's time to, I don't know, like this knight is is going away from from the center. So would there be something else in this position? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this queen on a5 is also doing a weird job. <laughs> so. Yeah, maybe this was what he wants to achieve. But, 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 what what can we do? What can we do here is the question. Can yeah. I go something like B4? Just B4, very brief. And what if I yeah. just take? I Yeah, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I don't know what happens if you take. I just want to put all your pieces on the queen side ah, so I can sacrifice something. This is the idea, Laura. Uh, let me show you. Okay. Yeah, queen c1. And after you go here, you just take this. Takes and then knight g5. Because the bishop is no longer... Or maybe... <clears throat> is it working? Because there is a rook here. Hmm. Damn rooks. Yeah, maybe not working, but interesting. No, though. yeah, very, very interesting point. Oof. Yeah, this is tough. I mean, oh, no, this, this is one. after, yeah, yeah before. No, I just wanted to be brave. I, I did not want to calculate though because it's tough. I don't see an exact way how to sacrifice anything on h6 or g7 because this knight on f3 is. Mm, not doing what I want it to do. But again, I guess you just have queen c1, king h7, yeah, queen yeah. c2 in worst case. Yeah. Worst case scenario. Yeah. That at the very least we have that repetition. Eric, please guide us to the enlightenment. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I have much more to uh much more insight to provide here unfortunately i think you make a very good point that at any point Feruja has a draw in his pocket with this queen c1 queen c2 idea is this a um is this a, an idea though takes, takes like this? i like how you think yeah and there's king also seven. Sorry, yeah. rook g8 in the end yeah but here i want to play here not queen g5 king h8 king h8 and oh i can go here maybe hmm this bishop looks scary here. because whenever you play there's... bishop here i have do i have yeah i have this and but king h7 yeah but queen g4 rook g8 queen e6 queen e6 Ooh, this is spicy <laughs> spicy and this is what we want to see play out yes. as uh, <laughs> commentators and spectators but have a feeling it's probably yeah. not going to transpire this way. So I this don't... knight is very crucial in protecting the f6 square if any sort of combination happening around the king there, like h6 and so on. So yeah, uh, Laura's move, rook d8, I think, which move? I think this one, because I think this one is needed for something like this mm. letter. Uh, yeah, so as long as the knight is not, um, losing control of the, over, over f6, then at least now there's queen d1 and queen check and so on. So yeah, Firuja is, I think, is currently checking 
yeah where does the knight go or what what what's what's uh, black's response in this position otherwise this sort of uh combination with g7 with h6 might happen on the board and the one other thing i can point out is let's say rook d8 i think bishop takes h6 immediately is also drawn yeah same idea but mm. a little bit more forcing so nothing with bishop g5 yeah i don't think so because you have this yeah. and this later on so take takes and then this is just something lost and too many mate threats yeah too many great yeah so for sure. here you can uh rook here let's say it takes this takes this here here and then check and virtually there's an and pass on after this and this might be just losing for black because then you can just simply grab this bishop so yes c4 very tricky move um also reserving the idea of of this uh, not perpetual repetition on c1 and c2 yeah and they have 20 moves to make the time control and mm -hmm. they're both very low on time at this point like gukash had great time advantage mm -hmm. and now it's gone so this this can get to like literal blitz at some point right well we'll wait until gukash um play his move but let's take a look this one we haven't talked about it at all leading j versus five shelly um Let's see how did the game go. So knight f6. Uh, I kind of like wishing players to play knight g5 just, you know, because it, <laughs> it, it gives us like or promise us like a very fighting and inter entertaining game. Uh, d3. So we're back to the old Gucci piano. d6, c3, a5. Yes, knight bd2, castle, rook e1, bishop e6. So this idea. h3, h6. Bishop b5, knight e7. So far, so good for both sides. d4, and you don't take on d4. Bishop d3. This is interesting. This pawn sack is not uh, something that you see often. Uh, after this, this, and after this, I think in this position, what can you do? Um. Um. Ah, hmm. this one. Yeah, we saw something similar this in uh, Vidit against Takaru. Vidit mm. with the black pieces. Yeah. Well, with maybe there's Bishop overlapping H3, ideas. Yeah. But I don't think right. that's uh, that's it. I think this one because you also have this idea with Queen here. So I mean, ah. at some point you can just take and then Queen C five, mm -hmm. winning the Bishop again. Uh, I mean, if this happened like this, then you can have this one. Mm. And but then, there's so. Can I ask, uh, instead of knight df3, is there knight ef3 in that line? Maybe queen g3 is there. That's what I was worried of. Like here. Ooh. Hitting both oh, here and then oh. here. Yeah. Fancy. Yeah. And then you have... And is, there, is there knight d4? Knight d4. Nice. Why didn't I see that? This was actually my idea in the other line with bishop takes f2 and queen ah. c5 was to play knight d4. But maybe it works against this as well. Maybe. Okay, so maybe just queen c5 or bishop takes f2 and c5. Let's see. Um, knight e f3 in this position. Right. Well, that's what I was saying. Or After bishop, bishop takes f2. Ah, bishop h3. But the thing is, there is mm. e5. It gets murky. <laughs> murky, okay, murky. But Here I can have queen e2. And knight is hit. Or maybe, can we mod the water by playing hang on there check can i go bishop f2 immediately f a m bishop f2 immediately takes and queen c5 queen c5 knight d4 we have knight d4 oh, now, knight d4 yeah, or, or yes this, yeah even though yeah this is so maybe important. this trick doesn't work you can just simply take on f2 here knight e f3 is there anything else I cannot take on F to right, so oh because ninety four so. right right yeah so 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 hmm it's not as simple. It's a slight mystery. Why why was a pawn <laughs> left hanging and not taken? So okay, if D E like this D E, I think you have to take it back, and if right. Knight E. 
I feel like these sacrifices just always work somehow. Um, but what can I do? I I don't play this with white, so I'm not actually familiar with the ideas as much. I hmm. Yeah, I'm going ah, to okay. I, I have an idea. I have an idea. I, I'm remembering the Vidit Hikaru game. Vidit had included this move C6, so can we include it here? Mm -hmm. And let's say Bishop F1. My idea is to play Queen B8. Let's say Knight E F3. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know there's Knight D F3, but let's say Knight E F3 and then Queen A7. Maybe it doesn't work at all. I, there's rookie rookie two, but. I can give my just got excited um, about attacking the the thing. Yeah, I can give my my pawn again if I want to. But uh, yeah, there's queen, there's queen e two. Why not queen e two? You cannot play bishop c four. I'll take it yeah. with the knight. Yeah, maybe maybe this just doesn't work at all for flag. Okay, this is a mystery now. Like, what? Can, can we check this with the engine? Because we we've, <laughs> we've been stuck on this for a few minutes, and this might be oh interesting just to check. So it is takeable. Ah, this pawn is takeable. So instead of playing bishop d3, which uh, Liting J did in the game, she could have taken this and then uh, still has an advantage. So this pawn sacrifice is actually dubious. So the best move apparently is knight g6 after knight takes e5. Oh, wow. uh, you don't want to do that. The best way to yeah? get compensation. Wow, wow, wow. You don't want to do that after sacrificing a one like that but i think the idea is you want to pressurize on f2 but this is a hard call to make because usually you want to attack i'm i'm pretty sure what faishali had in mind was queen d6 after knight e5 and then somehow i wonder if, if like faishali this. was still prepped though because she yeah i mean she unleashed this opening very quickly played bishop b6 in less than a minute yep so it's possible she just was preparing knight g6 and like white still has to play very accurately not to mm. get into trouble. It's a mystery, yeah. I wish uh, we could ask this to her. <laughs> but yeah, interesting. Okay, let's let's continue the game because um it it was still a long way to go. Bishop d3, rook e8, knight f1, let me toggle this one off. Uh e d4, knight d4, then knight g6. Looks like Pre balance, knight g3, bishop d7, bishop d2, developing move, bishop nestled in f1, and d5. E takes d5, knight takes d5, and queen b3. Then c6, knight e4, queen c7, a4. Looks like almost symmetrical there with the actually the four knights. This is the exact four knight position, yeah? This, uh, you have two knights in the central mm -hmm. squares. Rook a d8, rook a d1. Yeah. Very symmetrical. Very symmetrical on this. Okay, except yeah. the, pawn, uh, the bishop on f1. Looks such a cool. Looks <laughs> very fun. Knight g6, bishop c1, bishop a7, then push the pawn to c4. Knight b4, c5. But white is slowly gaining control because now this bishop, I know it, it can transpose to here, but then with a simple g3, I think it's it's done. Um, bishop c4 and bishop c8 takes on d5, knight b5 attacking, and queen b8. And this is the current position. And it looks like the e file bar is liking white's position. Mm. And not only liking, loving it, loving actually, it. Mm -hmm. which is okay, it makes sense. Like this knight is coming to d6, one of them, right? Yeah, maybe but if it is time yeah. now, yeah, to put the knight on d6. I, I mean, it's got to be, oh, you're right, one of them, yeah, because it it is not a bad idea to go here as well, yeah, because f7 is hanging, yeah, yeah, okay, so. king h7. We have we need some calculation, but, no, yeah. just take on. E8. Ah, E8. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. We we just take the books. I wanted to checkmate. Yeah, yeah. No, I was already looking at bishop h6. <laughs> it's almost yeah. a checkmate, actually, because after this, right? Uh, how yeah. are you protecting this? 
yeah, yeah and then yeah, this yeah, rook yeah. is also under attack so you have to take this maybe and then then this yeah, is just yeah. winning yeah exactly exactly good point yeah which knight are we putting there because if we're putting the e knight then we have to C4. kind of maybe calculate this one because takes yeah. takes and then bishop takes here yeah and yeah I think you were very lower. I think I think the other knight goes to d6. And then you're So if knight b d6, can black play bishop e6? Mm -hmm. I was wondering. Mm -hmm. Just trying to argue that white is a bit unstable. And this one is hanging. This one is hanging. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> it's a mess though. So if we take the knight on I'll e4. take the rook and I'll take b7. Yeah. Ah. And then we take c5. Yeah, knight c7, knight c7 at least. Oh, is there anything knight else? Escapes. Or I can I can play this if I, if necessary. Yeah. Mm. Okay. 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 Yeah. Maybe that just might be it. What computer wants? Or queen b5 as well, protecting this, attacking this. Yeah, I think this is just exchange up for white. Mm -hmm. So knight bd6 looks like a good move. Now attacking this rook. And then if the rook moves, then you can just take this with the queen and then you're very, very happy with the position. But other than that, what else can you do? This might be the move, like forcing win. Okay, one question. Oh. Uh, rook takes e4. I'll um, take it back with the rook. If, if rook takes e4, there's bishop takes c5. Oh, you don't want to take this? <laughs> Or oh, actually, uh, what's wrong with really. taking it with the yeah, knight? Yeah, just take it with the ah, knight, honestly. Eric, you're trying Easy. to bluff me. <laughs> ah, oh, there's this pin. Yeah. I saw the pin on the diagonal, not the file, though. <laughs> very yeah. nice. Simple, simple and effective. So a very pleasant position for Leeting J. She might on the right track to score another victory after yesterday's win against... Um, who did she beat yesterday? I Conero, yeah? I think yeah, Kunru yeah, Kun mm -hmm. Kunru already finished her game with yes. Anna, by the way. But but can I just say somebody in chat has mm -hmm. mentioned that Lei in this position, in the current position, has Queen takes d five. Oh no! Oh no! Wait, what? She, she took on a seven. Oh no! Here somebody mentioned Queen d five. Wow! Is could be a computer move. And then Knight f six, yeah. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Eight, knight f six. Yeah. And then take on this on one. E8. And then taking on d5. Yeah, and the queen is out of the game, I guess. Yeah, and then you, you will win this the... one anyway. Yeah. This That's one. crazy. That's like yeah. uh, full domination for white. Wow. It's yeah. hard to play. Like, it's hard yeah. to play. <laughs> and especially if this was the only way to to win, I think I think if eventually uh Litinja would, would choose it. But um but in the position up to Queen B eight, yeah, she is spoiled with choices one of them I, we talk about knight here but she chose to take on a7 queen a7 and rook d5 so no complication at all <laughs> oh and vaishali only has one minute to make 11 moves no 10 moves but no, this no, laura yeah. uh the ifalber doesn't like it i think it likes our move better because now it come it comes back to equality yeah oh. after bishop here i think you are forced to take the A, and I think you are. If this was happening, it's not so clear who's better. So rook d8 is on the board. Oh, but rook d8, rook d8, yeah, you, you don't need to go for that. But oh, now which it might is have better. been a mistake. It is better is now a for white. Yeah, so they should have gone to this imbalance position after rook d8. Just take on this one and this one, and then just king here. What's wrong with this, yeah? Well, I, I don't like how Black Queen is not in the game, but... It will be I would solved not... very quickly, Queen A6, and then the Queen will be back. Like, ah, yeah, okay. I just thought I can go Rook D1, Rook D8, but the Bishop is covering the square. So, yeah, maybe, maybe, like, I can I go Rook E3, though? It doesn't look so clear, that's what I mean. By Shali, probably thought this is bad as well. Yeah, this one is also chance. hanging, so oh. be careful with mm. that. No, okay, I, I'm yeah, just surprised that... Vaishali didn't choose this line because it looks like it gives it gives more chance for, for black because now in this position 
It's a it's just clear one pawn down. Yeah, just to clear pawn down, but 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 let's say I play queen c3, yeah. yeah, just protecting everything. And also at the same time, maybe maybe I'm um threatening to play knight f6. Um takes and then takes on h7, uh, h6 and then mate on g7. I mean, always opposite colored bishop is always dangerous. It's not that easy. So here maybe you're playing this. And then oh maybe now I can do my my idea. I played this. If you if you take, you can of course move your king, but if you take and I'm hitting the, the rook, and next move mm -hmm. I just take on h6 and then you cannot stop me from meeting you. Well the problem is I have queen d3, I think, here. Even queen ah I... queen d3 and queen d4. Nice. Oh, but this one, yeah, this is also hanging. But I just take it. No, this one first. Oh. And after this, then I'll take this. Oh, oh. This works. This... Messy yeah. lines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good sign for white, where like even, even if you overlook queen d4, it can still somehow work out. Mm -hmm. And be careful, next one I might play rookie yet. So you have to take, <laughs> I think you have to take the queen, but then white yeah. has so many extra pawns. So... I agree. Yeah, I'm, it's really surprising for me that Faisali took d8 right away, not b3, because I would have taken this position, even though I don't see any evil bar, but queen versus two rooks offer so many complications on the game. And sometimes you also have to be careful because queen is dangerous. Um, I'm just trying to find out what could what what Faisali could possibly thing in this position that she doesn't like. I, she was low on time. I guess she also panicked a bit. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But yeah. So mm. knight, let's come back to knight bd6. I just want to check one line there instead of knight takes a7, queen b8. Uh, I think this is the... No, no. What? So what? So I, I was just checking. I was very curious uh -huh. with yeah. the engine conclusions. So there's only one move for black to somehow keep a quality. Okay. And that move apparently is rook e5 after knight bd6. Knight bd6, rook e5. Well, that's a hard call to make. Because... Why did I... Right. It's, I mean, it saves a rook and tries to maybe somehow defend d5. I, I don't fully understand it because... Oh, maybe I do because rook takes d5. There's bishop e6. Ah. But it looks oh, like a mess. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Tough. Yeah, that was tough. And I guess the other thing to highlight is whoever had mentioned like queen takes d5 earlier as a top engine move, they, they <laughs> were correct. This was actually the top move by far, according to the engine. It's only completely one, winning yeah. move for wow. white. Yes, but that's so yeah. hard to find in, that's so tough. I mean, I think in an overboard game. It's going to go down in many puzzle books in the future. Like They will put <laughs> yeah. it as a variation. Okay, Litinger versus Faisali, a variation that white could have taken on d5. I mean, the yeah the, the question would be after queen b8, find the best continuation for white and then queen d5. Such a beautiful move. Like, very beautiful. I mean... You have to take this, yeah. Otherwise, it's just pretty much a very easy position for white. Then comes this, and you have to take it, and then check first. Uh, king goes g7, h7 doesn't matter, and then you take on d5, followed by rook d8, and this is also cramped. This is also cramped. And yeah, you just have to understand that black is completely paralyzed here. Like, there's really no sensible moves for black in this position. It's almost looks wrong. Almost six long, yeah? Yeah. You're right. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Okay, so the game went with knight a7. Oh, we, we saw this, yeah? And then takes here and not taking on b3. Faisali took on d8. Queen c3. Queen... Oh, no, not queen a6, but b6. Now trying to get into the game. And what do we think in this position? If I were white, I would have gone something like this i'm really liking my idea a quiet move please take my pawn uh-uh <laughs> using those oh, dark squares wow. oh there's rook d4 but no there's knight c5 so yeah. everything's good using all my resources exactly but 
Is there anything else? Because because this idea doesn't work. You can just simply take queen takes and then queen e7, yeah? So yeah, I like b3. A very quiet move. Uh, it's like mimicking your opponent. Your opponent just play b6. Okay, let me do the symmetrical um, move by playing b3. But yeah, it's it has a hidden idea here, here. And let's say f6, yeah? Then okay, at the very least you can take and then take on this one. Mm, nice. That's very nice. Very nice spot. This B3 looks like beautiful. But again, like this is a very concrete continuation because normally in this position you wouldn't like to put your pawn on the square with the same color of your opponent's bishop. Yeah. So everything has to be concrete. If it's like a strategical continuation, this is B3 is, is definitely a mistake. So yeah. Any thought, guys? Mm. Okay, By the way, and, as we've been yeah. analyzing this, there have been two results among <laughs> right. the women's. Let's let's see which one. Do uh, I think the game between Lahno versus Salimova? Oh no no. Let's let's do Anna versus uh, Konev because we saw the position up to Queen C two, and yeah, they played Rook D one. This is the move by both mm -hmm. of you. Rook D eight was played, and mm -hmm. E six. Yeah, we analyzed until this position and Queen B three, allowing okay. Queen takes F two check King H one, and then. Oh, this is a nasty discovery. So, Conero prepared that with rook e8 and queen c4 attacking d4 and queen e3, queen takes c6, queen takes e6. Okay, now it's <laughs> kind of simplified. Yeah, and then they just making moves until um, move 40. Mm. Yeah, it is pretty much simple flight and nothing else much going on. So the critical line in that position was um, when after Queen C2 then, yeah, it, pretty much Anna has to come up with a plan not to not to blunder or anything. And also, it's not that easy for Black as well to continue the game. But I think a draw is a fair result for both of them. What do you think, guys? Yeah, it looks like a... a peaceful finish um I, I was just like briefly checking if there are any like alternatives according to the engine but looks like a pretty clean finish and no no major improvements towards the end maybe there is some small mm -hmm. edge for anna in the middle game but really nothing major mm -hmm. right so oh i'm happy to announce that the team here played my move, B3, is on the board, and Vaishali is on the time trouble. She had four seconds left before she made the last move, Bishop F5. Wow, 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 beautiful B3. It's, yeah, on fire again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what, after Bishop F5, do we see Maybe Knight Bishop B2? B2? Do we see Bishop B2? Okay. And then after this... You can, this looks so bad for black. Yeah, knight d6 is in there. So many ways. Followed by check letter or something like that. Yeah, I think I think bishop b2 has to be played. But if not, then what else? Also, since now e7 is covered, uh, there's mm. knight f6 idea. But and also, oh, there are many things you play. <laughs> you can also play knight d6 here. I think you can also push the pawn to c6. Oh wow! Just Everything. too many, too many. Not to mention bishop takes h6. No, bishop takes h6. I didn't see this. So if takes mm. takes knight f6 and then king here. I don't know if this actually works though, but I was thinking knight h5 in this position. And knight h5. Oh, wow. Just go for the kill. <laughs> go for the kill, Eric. Yes. Oh, this is nice. I love it. Yep. No, too many, too many winning moves here. So I think we can safely say that Liting J will be winning another one here and then scoring yeah the second victory so so she has three and a half minutes to come up with her next move but sometimes it's difficult though when you're like when you have so many good options you're just spoiled for choice do you choose the ice cream the cake the cookies like you really <laughs> want it all but you just have to choose like one path forward so um maybe she'll she'll take her time just to make sure whatever she plays yeah she's calculating correctly let's take a quick guess guys so what will be your guess in this position because we see so many good moves for white eric what's your guess which move bishop takes h6 i think is the most direct. bishop takes h6 laura off 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 okay i i will go with bishop b2 bishop b2 just to be different yeah. okay also i'd like to be different then i'll play knight d6 
Okay. 96. Mm. And I mean, Li Tingjue has to make uh, her move soon. So let's see which one that she will play. I, I, yeah, yeah, I really Ooh. love Bishop Eight Six. Can we make six? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, does that work? Does that work? Oh, oh um, the idea may well, be like if king goes here, you can just push here, right? And then, or taking taking on wow. b6 with bishop a3 wow. idea. Maybe yeah. that was the idea. Like this, this is all forcing. And bishop here, just killing. And if the king goes here, then now you can take. Oh, yeah, we're taking everything. Everything is crumbling for black. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice move. And oh, king h8 is on the move. Um, I mean, on, on the board. So. Bishop h6 is there, knight here is there, right? Even knight h5, even, even knight queen, h5, yeah. Even queen d4 is there to give a mate here. <laughs> I mean, so many That's moves. Funny. Queen d4, you're attacking this and this. That's um, nice. Oh, yeah, we'll too many. We'll see so many moves again. I think we'll see the finish. And even bishop b2, everything. Bishop b2, <laughs> even bishop c6. h6, taking this also, push uh, c6, anything. What's, yeah? the, what's the most efficient way? What's... I like queen d4, just because it's flashy. <laughs> oh no, my queen, yeah. Oh no, my queen. <laughs> I like it too. Uh -huh. Because how are you dealing with this? If you protect, like queen here, maybe I'll insert this one, maybe. And if you protect it this way, oh, maybe that is the best way. <laughs> maybe <laughs> I shouldn't be too flashy. Nah. I, this, this, is this, okay, is still... no, this is still okay. <laughs> but I mean, what is the quickest way to win? Knight e8? Just, just bishop h6 or... I'm still liking bishop takes h6. Bishop yeah. takes h6. They're yeah, very direct. You want to take this. Like self-forking. And then a very <laughs> dangerous discovery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this would be game over. So Litinger is double checking everything, yeah, not to miss. And what did he? What did she do? Bishop takes h6. Oh, okay, yeah. so she's very close to winning this one. And I think let's take a look the game between. Um, which one would you like to look at? We there are. Gorchukina versus Tanzo. You already ended up with another draw. Um, mm. It's also a draw between Lahno versus Salimova. So this one is the last game in the women's section. Uh, whereas in the open section, uh, let's take a look at this one and update ourselves quickly. After Queen takes a5, c4. So Gukash didn't bother about this pawn and play rook g mm -hmm. through g8. Ah, clever move. So that this idea wouldn't work anymore because at least there is no bishop g5. Um, and now rook a1, queen b4, and b3. Knight yeah. c5, knight d4, knight e4. Now all the yeah. all the pieces are coming. Rook e3. Oh, I don't think I don't think this is what Firuja had in mind. No, no, this is not what he wanted to do. I feel like he got carried away with with the, all this a5 c4 but okay again it was not an easy position to continue and only six minutes and 16 moves to make mm -hmm. <laughs> this is this can still be fun like what happened to this at least i have a draw i i mean yeah it's really on Let's tilt yeah so i i yeah yeah, let's let's check this one. Yeah, instead of c4, can we just seal the deal and then uh, take this? Even after, this, like, yeah. yeah, it should be equal. Yeah, bishop takes takes and then queen here. Yeah, I was just checking if there is anything. No, mm. let's check here. So no. c4, rook g8, and this is still a draw apparently. I mean, um, equal. Yeah, I guess I can still go queen c1, or can I? Oh yeah, not taking h6, but just queen c1. Yeah. Oh no. Bishop because now we have bishop, bishop f8. f8. Ah. And this is so strong. No, bishop f8. What the hell? <laughs> um. Oh, now b4 <laughs> maybe. Yeah, that's that's because you cannot take on b4. And maybe you get some sort of compensation on the queen's mm. side because then the bishop and the rook kind of 
paralyzed yeah. and they, 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 they're a bit stuck. So just the compensation, not the repetition. Um, what else is there? Uh, so after rook g8, rook a1 and queen b4. Okay, so Gukash has been playing the right moves. And after b3, knight goes forward. And after knight d4, yes, knight e4. And after bishop, uh, sorry, after rook e3, yeah, now Gukash is in control. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't think we need the eval bar to uh, kind of sense that <laughs> momentum has shifted in this game. Mm -hmm. Like Faruja missed his opportunity to force a repetition. Maybe due to tilt, maybe he feels like he's in a must-win situation given his past losses, right. but it looks like things have already gone wrong. Like he's down a pawn and Black is activating the pieces. Yeah, this doesn't look good for Firuja again. He, I, I, but still, it's it's surprising to me that even after all these losses he had, he's still pushing for the win. Like he could have drawn with this queen c one like five, ten mm -hmm. moves ago already, and he just yes. he really wants to win. It's and when you want to win too badly, you're making mistakes. So. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately for Firuja, it is what's happening. Yeah, he feels the the need to win the game, uh, because he's in the bottom field right now in the standings. So yeah, if you're uh, such a thinking, then then it will affect your chess heavily. Just like what we are seeing right now, yeah, there's no better. I think there's no better way than to make this queen c one, queen c two idea work. But yeah, c four. Even then, rook g eight, and maybe there's still b four, but. He didn't find the best moves here. Yeah? Normally he would, but rook a1 and then the position was just crumbling after this one. And queen c5, queen c yeah, maybe protecting a7 so that the rook can come to the center. Um, Gukash hmm. had everything, has everything under control. Yeah, not looking good for Firuja for sure. Uh, what is simplified rather quickly is the game between Fabiano versus Pragnananda, uh, closing into a drawing position. So we saw the position up to, uh, eventually I'll find it. So this one, knight c6 and then knight f3, castle, castle, queen e7, I think we saw it this part, and then bishop a6, rook c7, rook f d1. Knight b8, bishop d3, f5. Okay, we saw this one already. And after queen e5, queen e1, knight c6, and rook db1. Yeah, we saw this position. Rook a8, bishop b5, queen d8, g3, knight e7, king g2, queen c8, doubling up on the c file. And after rook c3, offering a trade. Queen c7, rook a b1, and back to the b file. Yeah, nothing much happening actually, just anything like this. So it's, it's another silent draw offer here that um, Pragnanada play rook mm -hmm. c3. If Fabi wants to make a quick draw, then this might be happening, but he played knight g1 instead. Followed by rook c1, takes, 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 mm -hmm. takes, takes everything. And this is the current position. Nothing much, yeah? I think this yeah. is very close to draw. Yeah, can, we can predict a draw, I guess. Even though in these kind of structures, endgame is better for black just because d4 is a weakness, but we have opposite color bishops and I don't think we can expect more. So where does the rook go? If the rook goes here, I was thinking rook maybe c2. rook c8. Yeah. Ah, rook c8 just neutralizes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think you have to... Oh, rook b1 is, is on the board. Yeah, I think you have to keep the rooks. That's what I wanted to say. Because if it's... If the rooks are off of the board, then this pawn has become really a weakness. Because mm -hmm. then the bishop can control it from behind. And then the knight can go to f5 all the time. Because white doesn't have any... You know, black doesn't have any weakness in terms of pawn structure uh, it is only only black can play for win because default pawn is weak but so i think it's a good call by fabi to keep the rook on the board because then this this pawn can easily be defended if it was getting attacked and now the bishop has to go possibly go back to h 
six and then after like knight e2 or knight mm. f3 yeah i don't see much in this position yeah i could also go to a3 or something i mean i could like or oh, it's fine bishop and this and is this fine. yeah yeah yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> But the other idea with bishop h6, I like it because after knight e2 or f3, I could go knight c6 maybe. And then right. my knight is coming to b4. And then I'm activating my pieces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But then we're giving up the c file. So again, eh, I don't know, but it's equalish. Yeah, it's equalish. And I'm sure Prague will, will find the best way to continue. Maybe after bishop h6, then... Um... Hmm. Yeah, go back. You want to go back? Or B3, maybe you go Rook B3 or something. Yeah, something like that so that I can go to C2. But yeah. I was thinking of your move like this. But okay, yeah. I, I'll, I'll protect first here and then I'll, I'll play Rook C2 next. Or maybe. No, no, I go Knight B4. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Can... so maybe better it's Rook B3. So mm -hmm. I can play yeah, like this and Rook B3. So if you mm -hmm. play something like this, then I can do this and then Rook here is coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so still well, have to be a bit careful. Eric, what, what are your thoughts? I think it's just going to be a draw off the card <laughs> yeah. bishops. I mean, maybe they'll dance around. Fabi's not going to blunder his D-pawn. <laughs> uh, maybe at some point rooks will be traded somehow, but even then, like if white can get the king to D3 and put a knight on E2 or F3, it's, I think, just a very stable position mm -hmm. for both sides. Yep. So perhaps we should switch, switch to either the Frugia game or the the uh, Vidic game. I think Vidic um, requires have, our attention. <laughs> and uh, I mean, have sorry, have we covered that all games in the women's section have finished already? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, well, let's 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 show this one. So after Bishop H six, uh, I think yeah, because Fashali was uh, under time trouble, she just took on C five, and after Knight H five, mm -hmm. um, apparently she resigned. Yeah, because this is yeah such an imminent attack even if you do this yeah you can do something yeah. like this followed by many things too yeah so well done for letting jay she didn't have a good start but in the last two rounds she showed that she is a very capable player and uh before this round she was in the clear fourth and now after this win she will just gonna mm. get <laughs> up and up again so well done and let's see if it's game where did we see it last? Um, Oof. A uh, long, time, long ago. time ago. <laughs> I think this was something like here. So queen e7. No, we, we saw it much later when the b6 and bishop b7 has already happened. Uh-huh. Um, so knight has, yeah, g3. Ah, yeah, yeah. Around g6, here. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, and yeah. here played g6. Queen d2, c5, queen c3. F6, or rook fb1, rook f7. A very actually straightforward approach by, by Fidit here. Just one move after another. And also I see there is no retreating move so far by Fidit. <laughs> uh, you can recheck re it for me in case I'm wrong. Okay. Um, h3, king g7, and then sideways, knight h4, king h7, sideways again, rook g7. Queen e2, queen e6. Very, very patient. C3. Oh, now retreating move after move 24. Rook f1, a4, c4. Okay. Wow, it's, it's been a very quiet game, full of technique, I would say. Sorry, sorry to disturb you, but I feel just down to two minutes and it's only move 30. Is that correct? That is correct. I Oh, God. We should probably focus on that one because yes. this one is already past move 40. Yes. Just, just let we'll me quickly play all the moves because I just want to see okay. how the current position is because um, sure, sure, sure. we haven't seen this game for so long. So take six yeah, yeah. here. Knight. So many repeating moves. Um, This one, this one. H4, that'd be C3, C6, and G takes H4. Okay, now at least both players are already passing the 40th move, and let's switch back to this position. So we left it on... Oh, another pawn was taken. Okay, Rook E3, Queen C5, Rook C1, Rook G D8, B4. Ah, Queen takes B4, C D5. Knight takes okay. F2. 
What? Am I missing something? I don't understand all of this. King takes, rook what? takes, and rook e4. Yeah, the bishop goes here. So if you play here, at least bishop goes here. Let's see. Here, But the rook here. is coming to d8. Exactly. But at the very least, you can sack your rook like this. Ah, but, but still, queen takes. We have and... too many pawns. Like, we're taking on e5 later, aren't we? I don't... Box going to be up a ton of pawns in the end. Yes, yes. Uh, this is a safe position for Gukash. Yeah, so rook e4 is on the board, and Gukash is still thinking which one to um, include first, rook d8 first, or bishop c5 first, or there is no difference. I don't think there's a difference. Shouldn't be right. I don't think so, um, as well. No, yeah, I think it's it's the same, but I guess Gukish is thinking if he even wants to play that. Yeah. But if not, um, then oh, what can you hmm. play in this position? <laughs> Maybe um, if you were just thinking, or Gukish, that after bishop c5, rook c5 immediately or something. I know, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, if you want this... to play safer, yeah. then you just bring the rook first, yeah? Because it's kind okay, of like rook forcing... Yeah. And, and he, he played rook a d8. So it's oh. kind of like forcing your opponent to play bishop e3. Oops. Ten moves to And make. it happened. And now oh, bishop God. c5 is coming. I feel nervous for Firuja. I feel extremely nervous. I see this time. Yeah, the time situation isn't good for Firuja. Yeah, so after bishop c5... And we'll just like to repeat that they do not get 30 second increment till move 40. So... Um, Firuja literally has 2 minutes and 40 seconds to finish 10 moves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 10 moves in 2 minutes is a lot without increment. Even with increment, you still kind of like nervous if you cannot make it. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's without, without increment. Yeah. I would be. Yeah, I would be so stressed out. Okay, what what's the idea if it's not bishop c five? Yeah, okay. I think bishop c five yeah. ought to be play. Uh, is there any better alternative? Any checks? Maybe queen b two, but there's rook c two. I was thinking about some kind of f five. But no, I, I, that's just useless. <laughs> um, I guess I wanted to open the F file, but it doesn't make any sense at this point to do that. So bishop c5 looks logical. But can I just go like a5? What's what's the what's F5, the idea? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was thinking that too, because maybe white cannot do anything on that position. But okay, let me play. Maybe this is it. Queen g4. Oh, bishop, bishop c5, c5 played, yeah. okay. And Firuja oh, no. had to take it, yeah. Firuja had to take the the bishop, I guess, because after bishop c5, I mean, bishop takes d4, then black is up three pawns. Yeah, uh, no other option. I don't see it, but he has not played yet. And he still has 10 moves to make. And he's going to be under two minutes, I feel like. Mm -hmm. No, there's no other move at all. I was just wondering about rook to b1, but... Uh, yeah, that's, that's... I have a feeling that probably just doesn't work. Even oh, queen b3? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Interesting. Um... Rook d4 doesn't work, yeah. Let's see it. Rook d4. I think you just take on this, yeah? Yeah, takes. I take with a rook. Oh, yeah, you take with the rook, yeah. Can I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rook takes. Oh. This is, this is nice. I mean, you can and take c5, the... but then e4 is hanging. I don't understand. The material is black, but just two pawns up right now. Okay. Three pawns up, yeah. It's a lot. Oh, so three pawns, yeah. <laughs> rook d4, yeah, you, you don't have any other move. Because now the queen is under attack, the rook is under attack. If you take on this, I'll just take it like this. If you take this, then I'll take this one. And then if you take this, then what can we do? Rook here, maybe, yeah? I mean, this is just this a winning... This looks lost. This is just lost. So here, I think rook d4. 
But l- why does evil bar say it's equal? Because I'm peeking, I'm oh. cheeky, cheating a bit. Wow, and... so queen b3 is the right move then? Yeah, and I don't understand. Or maybe what... this. What? Oh, can we just do that? Yeah, yeah, this is the move. Because, wow, mm. what, what are the... <laughs> Here is a spot, the right move within a few seconds. So if because if you take this, then I have this material... Uh, yeah, two rooks and I think it, it should be holdable and I think it should be fine. So queen b3, if you take and it takes this and then if you take this, now this is winning for white because then you just take this. If you take this, now take this. Yeah. I mean, maybe not winning, but at least at least uh, white equalized. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. Queen b3, we didn't, we were <laughs> underestimating the move, but turns out this is the best move in the position wow wow Felicia. i'm wondering if not only did we overlook the move i'm wondering if gukash overlooked this move because it's Possibly. it's an easy move to kind of discard feeling like white's <laughs> abandoning the the d4 knight but somehow the tactics are working out so if you take the queen just take it back like this and white maintains extra piece white maintains extra piece um three a piece for three pawns but at least the game is still going on it's not like it will end it it will end suddenly so queen b3 such a nice move and if the queen doesn't do anything now you can safely move yeah or even take this under let's say let's say i play like queen here what happens now yeah what happens just, now because this I, is, I this is just... the idea yeah but 92 Oh, 92, yes, yes. Um, yeah, you're protecting everything. There is no check on D2. Yeah, nice. Queen B3. So instead of... Because wow. the the bar was, was lacking Black's position, so Bishop C5 was not the right move then. But if it's not the right move, then what could possibly be the right move? Is it Bishop G5? I guess we have to peek a bit. Or give a check first and then bishop g5. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah? Oh, maybe this is just okay for... Oh. This is just fine for for white. I thought it was wow. almost losing. It looks like it's losing, but wow, it's holding on literally just by a thread. So and queen takes. In the, yeah. in the game, it happened. Queen takes like this. Simplification and then another simplification. And probably trying to get this pawn's moving. Maybe rook here first, not to allow the rook on the second ring. Oh, wow. Yeah, but but wow, Alireza, <laughs> very resourceful with queen b3. <laughs> I'm impressed with this queen b3, and I would have expected him to to predict bishop c5, but because he took like 30 seconds to play queen b3, which is a long time for his time, yeah? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I guess he was looking at something else instead of bishop c5. Yeah, maybe he, um, he saw actually there's queen b3. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and now what, what is this? Because I feel like uh, Gukesh made the right choice. These two pawns on a and b against the knight is more comfortable than if white had a bishop. Mm. So what are we predicting in this game? They're, they're both low on time at this point. Yeah, it seems like Ferruja is not in any danger of losing this. Like the extra knights, yeah. and personally, I'd much prefer having white than black here, even if it's objectively still equal, because black doesn't have any dangerous past pawns. White still has enough pawns on the king side. Rook c7 is on tap. And Gukesh taking his time, um, but just has to make enough enough moves to get to move forty. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think mm -hmm. will be the move here? Rook d7 or a5 immediately, going a4 or what? Rook d3 offering an exchange. I think I think black should be better with mm. having two rooks on the board instead of one. So maybe I'll keep that rook, and then play something. Hmm, that's a good question. Like, I guess rook f rook c7 is a big threat because then you're attacking f7 and b7, so we should do something about that. We can also start with rook b5, maybe putting the other rook on d5 as well. Mm, having double rook on 
if we yeah. frame like this and then hitting on this pawn yeah oh a5 played a5 by. okay uh -huh. so very straightforward approach by gukesh also judging from the time situation maybe this is the best the best move because you, you want to pressure your opening as much as you can um having so low on time like this <laughs> A5, yeah, but what happens after rook c7? Rook c7. We just go a4. I think a4. Probably a4 and mm. eventually rook d7. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I want to go knight c5. c5. Yeah. yeah. But b5? Mm. And b5, and you can't quite take on f7. Okay, maybe okay, this looks here, scary now. Here, yeah. Something like this. Oh, rook c7 play. Oh, we're on the and, right track. So rook c7. And, but... Ah, but one minute and eight seconds and still six moves to go. Yeah, this is, this is the nervous time right now. So rook c7, I think a4 is the best um, practical choice in this position. Um, yes, yes, we're on the right track, guys. <laughs> yes, knight c5 is there. So if b5 happens... I think it's knight b7 and knight d6. I think that's the idea. Just having the outpost on the knight on d6. Wow, 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 wow. Um, are we predicting a draw? <laughs> are we not predicting a draw? What are we going to do? This could be here? a long fight going forward. Like, if anyone's yeah. playing for a win, I think it's still Ferruja. Like, if he can optimize his knight, slow down the queenside pawns. Yeah, but this pawn is almost on a3 already. So <laughs> I would not be so That's true. <laughs> But with the rook on e3, at least the pawns yeah. are tamed. For now. And even if we see b5. <laughs> like, white's going to keep some initiative. Gukesh has to start playing faster. Oh, he's also... Yeah, rook six eight, moves. Okay. Six moves. And what did he do? Rook oh. a8. Oh, giving up the pawn on b7, but with the intention of pushing this pawn. Rook a8. Oh. Can you stop it? Like... Knight takes here, here, and then just mm -hmm. pull the rook here. Because at least, sorry, at least the... No. Rook b5 rook works rook, yeah. then, and rook b1. Or does it? Um, That might be it, actually. No, because then you have rook e1 at the end. So yeah, knight d6. Ah, king takes e1, that's true, yeah. yeah. And if like this, like this, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but there's something else is happening. So here, knight d7. So not taking on. Oh, Ooh, threatening knight b6 with a fork. <laughs> but do we care? <laughs> I guess we do. Yeah, can, can Lot just play e3 and no, keep I think, storming down? I think it's not knight b6, but I think it's rook here. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, no, my this. rook. <laughs> and then this one. And then you just walk into the mating net. Oh, my here, God. And then this. So a3 oh. is not an idea. I mean, a3 is not a move after knight d7 because you can... Oh, in 40 seconds for Gukesh as well. Oh, no. But this is such a nice move, no? It, it prevents a3. It also at the same time attacking b6. It's going to be hard to protect it. I'm... What is this game? I cannot, like, four moves to make. King h7. Oh, King h7 I, I don't believe yeah. this. What? Can can I just take on b7 now or just wait? What are we doing here? Can I go rook f3? I, I, I like this rook f3 idea. You you're creating a counter attack there on f7 followed by knight f6, next next move. So yeah, I'm I'm oh. on board here with rook f3. <gasps> wait, what about Four, 14 6? seconds yes. and he played it all oh, three seconds. Oh, seconds. Rook f3 on the board. Three moves. Oh no. Three moves to go. Gukesh. Oh my gosh, they are on time trouble right now. Ten seconds to go. Good catch. No. You better not miss this. Come on. Oh what my happened? God. Uh, A3, A3 was already rook on the board. Seven. Rook takes F7. Wow. King H8 is currently winning. And now just net F6, right? Net F6. Knight F8 was played. Oh, it F3, doesn't matter about queens. Knight F8, A2, <gasps> Knight G6, check. And it's a mate. Rick. Oh no. It's Resignation. a mate. What? What a wow. save by Fairuza, having a lost <laughs> position, and now because of the time trouble, he's winning this game against Gukesh. He won. Amazing. Oh my god. That what? was not the finish we were expecting. <laughs> no, not at what? all. <laughs> not at all.
Wow. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Oh, I, this was so nerve wracking. That was a big blow to Gukash, I would say, because he had such a nice position. I think he had to just play quite calmly there, not to, not to, how to say, like with this A5 move, uh, a little bit too in a rush, like in this position. Um, mm. Like this, yeah. And then takes, takes, takes. Yeah, like after this position. Maybe a5 is a bit too in a rush, you know, you, I think you should just consolidate everything first, like rook d7, until you get to the time control, because, um, but it's a really good find by Ferruja that after a5, rook c7, a4, knight c5, and rook a8, and knight d7, this is, wow. within a few seconds, it eliminates all black's idea, and in fact, this is setting up some attack to the black king, I mean, I think it's move of the day, this knight d7. And especially mm. with the beautiful situation. Move. The horsey was so tricky. It's so <laughs> hard to, to tame in time pressure. Yeah. Oh, the power of Leech's horsey and London today combination <laughs> was uh, a totally smooth win, yeah? <laughs> wow. Not to mention this, like, <laughs> h4, h5 in the opening, like, full oh, tilt from Verruja. Yeah, and a4, a5 were also that, and the rook leaves, oh my, no, what a game, that was, that was insane. Yeah, this come as a shock, I would say, after knight d7, then Gukesh suddenly realized that, ooh, I don't, I, I don't have any moves here to make, like, a really useful move to make, and king h7, I don't think that's the best way to go. But I, I mean, if I were Gukesh, maybe I would just play Rook something here and then just, you know, get rid of this knight on this d7. And after this, maybe I just give a check and then play a normal chess as long as I, I'm not getting mated. Because it's already a sign when you have the the knight on d7, it was already mm. a sign like Rook f3 mm. is coming. I already eyeing on this idea. If What if knight f6 is there, you know, uh, with a better calculation, of course. But... Um, I think, yeah, Firuja just showing his class in in in, in bullet actually. It is it is bullet mm -hmm. without without uh, increment. So well done, um, and this is his first victory as well in in the candidates. Oh, he finally did it, and he did it with the London system. That's crazy. That's insane, and that's impressive. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the only game that is still going on that looks like quite drawish. It's between Abbasso versus Fitted. So we saw the position after the 41st move, like G takes H4, mm -hmm. G4, so not taking back on H4, and then Knight G3, GH, and then Rook F6. Ooh, Rook F6. Rook takes, ah, okay. So after like yeah. this, then you have Knight H5 at least. Mm. Yeah, the white king is somehow safe there, even though there's a pawn on h3. And after queen d2, I saw the fall bar there. Um, black is fine, white is also fine. Um, okay, the game was kind of wild with all these g4, the pawn is on h3, but can we expect the end result soon? I guess not, yeah. Yeah, the H3 pawn looks. Oh, first good, of all, who who's playing for a win here? <laughs> yeah, or is it white? Good question. I think black is playing for a win. It looks like you know you have all your pieces around the white king H3, queen H4, bishop on D7. But of course now um, a concrete play is needed because bishop on D7 is is under attack. Mm. If you move it, let's say you move it like a, a normal square like E6. Yeah. Yeah. What's gonna happen? The queen cannot be Oof. away from f2 <laughs> you have to s always guard this position and if you take this uh you cannot take this maybe because of this and simplification is just better for white because then the king will be safe so you have to be careful here if bishop e6 it might be this move actually hmm Okay. And that line still looked very drawish with all the pawns being traded. Yeah. Oh, let's take a look here. Takes here, takes, and then takes this. Queen takes e4. Black holds on to h3, but 
can't imagine how either player can but, play for a win here. But Eric, do you remember the game between Gukesh versus Abasov where it was also <laughs> the Queen's endgame with one pawn mm. less? With outside passers, with right. With outside right, passers right, so. too. <laughs> yeah. A player can have some trauma, you know, like it, it, happening um, again in the same event. So maybe, maybe, maybe it would be better to keep everything on the board. So, but yeah, I agree with you. But I mean, would you rather play this position compared to this position after bishop e6 without taking on a4 because i think black uh, sorry white is still fine um finding other moves like for example yeah like I queen e2 or any other queen move for that mm -hmm. matter i mean queen b2 this is what i was thinking because i'm still holding on to f2 uh, but i'm also threatening for this check maybe but okay is there bishop takes c4 yeah don't like it and at then all. Queen B seven. Queen F seven. Bishop F seven. Bishop seven. Sorry. Yeah. So what happened? Bishop goes to C eight. Yeah. And now, ah, preventing this trade with the with the knight on C five. So if this happened, yeah, then we can take this, and after this, we can take this. And yes, Bishop is always better than knight in this type of end game. So clever move, Bishop C eight. Okay, but what do we do then? This looks like a tough game to defend in, in case we get to yeah. this. Maybe still like equalish, but I like Black's chance, chances here and the, and the pieces are just something better. Can we protect? Wait, so even, even if yeah. they get to this position though, like knight okay. d3? Okay. We just knight go after e5 pawn? Okay. Can I go something like queen e4 or something? Just Nice. Queen, queen e4, four. knight f2. Okay. Wait, what? Okay. Oh, queen e4, not queen d5. Sorry. No, it's fine. It's, it's d5. Queen d5 is fine actually well. looks like yeah. a, a decent mm. move as well. Yeah, Even like better, queen d5 is better because you yeah. but, in everything. Okay, e4 and queen g5 check. Oh. Huh. Just seems like once the white queen can start checking the black king, it, it should be ending pretty peacefully yeah that makes sense yeah I think oh so, i didn't yeah. see this e4 move we yeah, are very well spotted e4 yeah do i have a way to stop it maybe it's it's correct to play queen e4 itself instead of queen d5 so often knight d3 queen e4 just to stop that idea yeah i was thinking knight f2 but that loses on the spot unfortunately <laughs> Oh no, my king. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, queen e4 looks nice. Yeah, but I was I was thinking, do we have to get into this with with white? Can we just Yeah, the protect? whole line is probably not necessary. Yeah, we were just checking in case we, we take, but can we just protect the c4 pawn in advance? Oh, like this queen, queen takes, and then how do we queen e two? Yeah, queen, queen e two, two or or queen e two without taking on a four. Same thing, I think. Yeah, can we do something like that, or is bishop g four coming and it's strong? Uh, it can be met with knight c five. No. Mm hmm. Maybe yeah. I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, queen queen f five. Yeah, and I guess that's just very much fine for white. Yeah, and then move this somewhere. Like maybe here or here even yeah why not this one yeah and that looks like this is good yeah okay so what is our conclusion can we take on a4 or is it just gonna <laughs> worsen white's position okay but if i just do nothing here with mm -hmm. white what is black's plan that's the thing I think black mm -hmm. is trying to make white do something because if you just being um if you don't do anything then i think it's a good way to move the queen over here and over here mm -hmm. i don't know just to get a little bit more advanced with the queen and then possibly putting this king in the center so that there is no more check or something like that so um i would say black is is um just trying to improve the position little by little and waiting for a concrete idea by white if white doesn't do anything but if white does something of course 
Um, there's this one, yeah, and then mm. it requires some calculation. Yeah, it might just be a waiting game. Your white just <laughs> waits with the queen. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned Block's idea of queen g4 to f3. So let's imagine if we go back to the current position. Mm -hmm. If, uh, let's say, white plays queen c2, and yeah. black goes for queen g4, then white has queen f2. And... Yeah, it seems so solid for, I mean, for both sides. Queen e2 is on the but, board, so white okay. decides not to do anything and just wait. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think this is a good spot for the queen not to let anything with the black screen entering the position. But then, what to do in this position? Yeah, I would, I would move my king, actually. Yeah, where? Oh. Oh, oh, the cat attack. Hi. The cat attack. Hi. Oh, no. Schmuck, schmuck. <laughs> Sensing the uh, end of the round. <laughs> she's like, yeah, this. I'm getting wild. Chess is not as wild. I want <laughs> I want to be wild. Oh, wow. I don't even know what she's doing. Somebody was asking chat yesterday, what is she doing? I don't know. She's biting my blanket. She's angry at the blanket. Just wants attention. You've been giving too much attention to the candidates. Yes. Not to the cats. Yes, they're sad now. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's anyway. She will she will kill here now. I'm scared of her a bit because she gets aggressive. So if I'm too friendly, she can just scratch me. So I'm just like mm. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, this is your forehead. Oh, have you ever got scratched by Ferruja, Eric? <laughs> yeah, Eric. I, I've been adopted by Ferruja in, in online bullets uh, a few times, so I know how aggressive he can be. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see. Maybe that's the kind of aggressiveness that you would take from Ferruja, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I have to be careful not to get scratched. <laughs> Should have named her Alireza, yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. So oh, she's going for it. Okay, yeah, Bishop G4 has been played. <laughs> <laughs> you got so distracted by the cat. Yeah. Your cat is liking your rope there. My what? My? Uh, uh, that's Is that your blanket or your rope? Yeah, no, it's a blanket. Uh -huh. Yes. I, I don't know why she likes it so much. It's been cleaned. <laughs> Usually cats like dirty stuff. So maybe she's angry. It's clean, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we saw this um, few moves on the board. So Abbasov decided to play queen d2 and followed by bishop g4 and then queen d2. So if you play bishop c8 back, we know what's going to happen. But let's see if Pidet would try to do to do something differently. That maybe he's still thinking that he's better. Uh, we have the eval bar here with us. I can just put the multi-board view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, showing that it's still equal, but of course the players don't know about that. And I think if, if I was given this position on my game, I would still prefer to play as, as black and still think that black is better. <laughs> there you go, cat <laughs> invasion. I, I'm more interested in watching the cat than this game. <laughs> oh, my she decided to leave now. Oh, Eric, oh, you jinxed it. You shouldn't say something like that. You 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 scared the cat away. I should go. Gave it too much bed. attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's fine. She's like, okay, now I'm done being the star of the show. See you to see you after the free day. <laughs> yeah. So well, after Queen D two, Fidet is still thinking and. Yeah, if, if he wants to make a draw, uh, it's a very easy draw. He can just move the bishop back. But uh, I'd like to see the end or the finishing of the game between, mm -hmm. um, I think, Tanzongi versus, uh, Gwichkina versus Tanzongi. Because uh, we saw the position up to here before. And then knight f3, rook e2, king f1, rook b2, rook a d1. Yeah, this is pretty much like equal. Like check here, king here. Rook 1d2, rook b1, and then 
not too fascinating, but you know, let's let's check it till the end. F5, A5, and then rook 7, B2, knight D2. I would say this looks like a bit better for uh, black, but maybe, am I wrong? Yeah, there was some interesting oh. liquidation. Uh, yeah, it seems like both players played very cleanly, but in a few moves, after rook takes A4, rook E5, yeah, all the pawns basically came off the board. Yeah, this position, I mean... Black has an extra pawn anyway. Ooh, knight g4. Yeah, attacking the rook, but basically just leading yeah. to this line where the c pawn comes off, and then rook in three versus rook in three. And then king g6 right on the 40th move. So I think statistically in these candidates, both in open and women's section, um, most of the draws ended on the 40th moves. That I would say because so mm. many cases that they just agree for the draw on the 40th moves. Okay, so we are not missing much actually. Yeah, apart from the moment where Gochikina shouldn't have taken on d5 and then just play e4 here and then I think. Yeah, it seemed like e4 was the biggest miss of this game. I, I was checking briefly with the engine earlier and the apparently the best move for black in this position would have been to play c4. C4. Wow. Which is a very hard call. It seems to do. not so human. Yeah. Yeah, agree. No, mm -hmm. I don't think if Gretchen can up late E4, C4 would happen on the board. So that was a great miss indeed. Gretchen can would have, um, yeah, with E4, she could have had a better position with a significant winning chance, but she missed it. And then the game was pretty clean till the end and both. Um, shared the point and what about the game between uh oh we saw anna what mm -hmm. about this one because we saw the position after f6 then rook a d1 a5 yeah this bound to happen anyway the bishop has to develop uh knight e3 f e f e rook a6 f4 rook switch to g6 knight g2 bishop b7 Oh, amazing, actually. Knight g2 probably is the only move. It looks awkward, but it is the only move. Because if yeah. you do this, then there's this one. And the knight will stand weirdly on, on d5, maybe. But anyway, let's see. Mm -hmm. Knight g2 is there. And then bishop b7, rook f2. And another liquidation with the pawns. And after f5... Yeah, because black is threatens to take everything and then we maybe take this one next move. So f5, rook h6, rook d4, rook e8. Here king f8 takes on d6, takes, takes, rook e2, counter attack. Knight f4, then just takes c2, rook d7. Nice having this knight e6 idea. And after king e8. Rook takes g7, takes takes, rook takes b2. Solimova went to mostly rook and games in his candidates. Like, <laughs> she had at least three games with rook and games. Rook yeah. f4, rook h7, takes this one. King f2, rook e4, rook a7, takes this one. And okay, this is an easy draw to make here. And rook yeah. a7. So I do want to throw out a fun stat for today's games mm -hmm. in the women's. Um, the three games that were draws, mm -hmm. all of them were perfect games according to Lee Chess. If you look at the game review on Lee Chess, mm -hmm. for all of them, there were no mistakes, inaccuracies, or blunders for either of the players. How do I do that? So the only messy game was between Vaishali uh, losing to Lei. But um, very clean games in the, clean the games, ones that yeah. were drawn. Yep. Okay. All right. So we see pretty much everything in the women's section and open section, um, except this one game that it's that's still going on. So after queen e2, bishop g4, queen d2, bishop c8, queen e2 again. And what do you think? Will Fidit repeat the moves and make a draw? Or will he yes. come up with something else? I, I think he's going to accept the fact it's drawn <laughs> and try and get some rest. Maybe go back, rewatch some of the commentary and see the 
the cats that made their their brief appearances. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he will do. I feel like, mm -hmm. yeah, I think there's no way to push. So I would be happy with the draw, and so I can go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering, no, um, uh, Abasov in this tournament. Mm. Still didn't make any wins, right? I mean, if he makes another draw here, let me just mm. pull up the standings. And okay, so Abasov is um there, of uh, rank number seven, and after this round, he will be the lowest ranked player in the in the standing because Filuza just won the game. So Filuza will be on the clear. Seventh, right, and then Abasov will be on the eighth place, and yeah. just by judging how many draws Abasov will make, like out of seven, he will make at least four draws, maybe assuming mm -hmm. that the current position is drawn. So by having four draws, he already makes fourteen thousand euros. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they get paid by half a point, yeah. They get paid by half a point and in the women as uh, in the open section, half a point worth 3,500 euros. Not a oh, bad way nice. to make money. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine you get paid so much for a draw in general. Right. It's a beautiful life. <laughs> yeah, so Fida is still thinking. Um this is thinking probably like what should be the final blow here? Maybe just offering a draw or playing bishop g4 again, just repeat the move. But he has to play a move, right, before offering a draw. So maybe we will see bishop g4 on the, on the, the board. Or maybe he's still thinking that he's better. So maybe he will come up with something totally hmm. different. Yeah, like you said, maybe he will just move the king. To the center, yeah, just get ready with anything that might happen but what it's would not be... gonna do much but yeah but what would be the idea though oh bishop g4 there you go yeah oh, okay. um eric your wish comes through and i think within like a minute we will see we'll see the result uh, next to their names as half and a half what do you think laura yeah we'll see i mean i'm waiting for it to happen yeah i don't know it's the pawn structure is just so so stabilized that I really don't think Vidit will try for more. Mm -hmm. um, but oh, no, he did to... not offer draw. He did not offer draw after Bishop G four. Okay, okay, wait. What what does he want to do now? But he does he want to? Yeah, yeah. If he doesn't move the bishop, then Knight takes A four is the idea. The queen has to keep an eye on the E four pawn, so he has to move the bishop hmm. again. I guess. Hmm, 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 hmm. Eric, you've been quiet? Yeah, it just seems like the more time that Vidit is spending, the more likely he is to go for repetition. Like, this is a situation I don't think you can really take risks as black, um, especially with A4 being loose. Mm -hmm. So it seems like he's just trying to be extra, extra sure um, especially there's no game tomorrow, so he can take as much time as he wants. Just be sure not to flag. <laughs> yeah, but it's a bit harder to get flagged this time because uh, the players yeah. have the players have 30 seconds increment for every move they make. So will we see Bishop C8 again? We, we'll wait, we'll wait. But um, yeah, this game will finish anytime soon, but just a, a quick recap of what we've seen today, especially in the open section. We've seen lots of dramatic finish, uh, especially in the game between Ali Reza versus Gukash, where, yeah, Ali Reza was in control. So it turns out his decision not to make a repetition on Queen C2, Queen C1 was correct then. <laughs> Because he might have foreseen this result beforehand. Okay, I'm not going to go for the repetition. I'm just going to keep playing. And Gukesh stumbled in the time trouble. And 
managed to make a huge, huge blunder when he was only a seconds away, a few seconds away, and Ali Reza finally scored his first victory in the candidates. And we also see a fiery draw and a very entertaining one from Hikaru versus Ian Nepomneci. It was such a very well done preparation by both sides and offering us lots of complications along the way. But in the end, um, they share a fair result to share the point. And nothing much happening on the game between Fabiano versus Pragnananda. It was rather a peaceful draw. Uh, both players, I think, just played it safe without any fireworks on the board, but with some technical nuances, of course. And now the game that is still going on is between Nijat Abasa versus Fidit Gujarati. I'm still waiting for Nijat to score his first win. There are seven games to go because I think... Uh, this round seven, I think this game will end with a draw. So yeah, whether he will score an upset in the next seven rounds, we will see. And in the women's section, we have three draws and one decisive game. Three draws, Eric mentioned everyone was playing almost a perfect chess without any mistakes. Uh, it was a very clean draw between um, Ana Muzicic versus Konero. Katra Lahno and Nurgul Salimova and also Alexander Gorchkina versus Tan Zong Yi. Um, even though Gorchkina missed a very good fighting chance there or good winning chance by playing e4 instead of bishop takes d5. We had one decisive result in the women's section that's between Litting J versus Vaishali. Uh, Litting J finally came back and played her best chess, scoring her second victory. And he should be moving up to... I would say she was on the clear fourth, so she should be on the clear third right now because Tanzogi will be with five out of seven, Alexander Grichkina will be four and a half, and then on the clear third, it will be Litingji with four out of seven. And we are coming back to this position again. Queen D2 and Fidit is still thinking. Uh, probably, <laughs> I would say Abbas have already offered the draw. But um, he's still thinking whether to accept it or not. Just, you know, just to be safe if, if he missed anything. What do you think, guys? I'm wondering I, if we're going to yeah. see Bishop C8 or if we're going to see a cat again. <laughs> like <it's>, <laughs> what, what appearance is going to take place first? Okay, so I'm going to tell you something you don't know. My The cat is already here in my lap, but Ooh. you don't see oh. it. Um, but the black cat. So white cat went to sleep on my bed. And the black cat is here because uh, she went here to ask for food. I have none here. And now she's just waiting here in my lap. Um, so, so we did stop. Ah, draw, draw. So I want to say that we did draw. So oh, then there she you go. It's officially over. Okay. <laughs> the game is actually over. Okay, let's see it. Whoa, Queen D2. And then that was the last, the last move of the game. Wow, what a day we had so far. Oh, how many, how many, only two decisive results. Mm -hmm. Okay, both for open and women's section, they, they, they had each one decisive result and three draws. So quite a very symmetrical results that we have. Mm -hmm. What, how, what has been your impression so far, Eric? Yeah, I think we were still treated to a really fun day of chess. I mean, the, uh, um, at least the the two most exciting games in the open section, in my opinion, were of course Ferruja against Gukash, and then this Hikaru Nepo game. Hikaru unleashing this very deep preparation, mm -hmm. Nepo managing to uh, keep his composure and and find the path to equality. Um, but yeah, I mean the the Ferruja Gukash game, I think, has been the most mm -hmm. well, one of the craziest games of the tournament, just given the opening, given that Gukash probably had good chances at some point to to be much better. Um, might take some some more computer analysis to see what his best chance was. But if he won his game today, he would have been tied for first mm. or in clear first. Clear but first. With clear the first. loss that Yeah. Right. But losing mm. the game, I mean he's still kind of chasing uh chasing Nepo now as a leader. So uh yeah, probably a, a huge missed opportunity for him. Yeah, what do you think about 
uh, today's games, Laura? What has been your best impression so far? Yeah, I, I also agree. I love the game between Firuja and Gukesh. I am not as impressed by Firuja's middle game with all these maneuvering, but mm -hmm. somehow it worked out at the end and the ending was so nerve-wracking. We need more of that. We need all the players to be low on time <laughs> <laughs> so, so that we can be stressed for them. And um, yeah, I also, also of course, liked N Naka and Ipo game mm -hmm. as it was a very exciting from beginning and and even though it ended in a draw, it was very eventful draw. And women's section, very nice win by Lei. She really came back. Uh, that's so, so impressive. Two wins in a row. And can't wait to, to see more chess after the free day, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. So as you mentioned it, yeah, tomorrow is the free day and we will reconvene the day after tomorrow for round number eight, where the pairings will be kind of like reverse. So we'll actually, we'll be able to take a look for the next pairings. And on round number eight, we will have Hikaru versus Fabiano Caruana, um, Ian Epumnechi versus Nijata Basov, Pragnananda versus Ali Reza, and Fede Gujarati versus Gukash. And in the women's section, we will have Katrina Lahno versus Gorchikina, Nurgil Salimova versus Anna Mazichuk, Tan Zongi versus Titinje, and Conor Hampi versus Faishali. So they were they already played. Um, this is the pairing for round one. They just reversed the color since um, this is a double round robin event. But yeah, it's been it's been great so far. I've learned a lot, many many good nuances and very nice observations by Eric too uh, in some of the games and Laura you've been mm -hmm. always amazing thank you so much oh. for your time <laughs> and thanks to the cats although I don't see the black cat I only see schmuck schmuck but always nice to have them appeared on our um, broadcast and yes so for everyone I wish you everyone Good morning, good night, wherever you are. <laughs> um, it's time for us to rest and tomorrow is the rest day. Yay. So everyone deserves the, this rest day. So we'll be back on the day after tomorrow. Stay tuned on the Lichas broadcast commentary on YouTube and Twitch. Thanks again for all the production team, all the graphic designers behind this um, stream. And thanks again to Eric and Laura. I uh, will see you again um, in a few days or to Laura, actually, because I don't know when I'll be seeing Eric again on the stream. <laughs> I'll return at some point before the tournament ends. Just stay tuned. Sure. Thank you so much. Okay. And there you go. Adios, everyone. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.